is a presentation of Sports South. As a freshman last year, Charles Bostic scored a career-high four touchdowns. And the Eagles failed to make the playoffs. Meanwhile, the potent Rattler attack wrapped up the most passing yards Georgia Southern's defense gave up all year. Now the highly touted Bostic is back at the controls and trying to lead Georgia Southern, the four-time national champs, back to the playoffs. It's Georgia Southern and Florida A&M next. Georgia on what otherwise is a typical Saturday afternoon. Tailgaters piling into Paulson Stadium and expectations are sky high for the Georgia Southern football program. And good afternoon and welcome to wet, very wet <laughs> Statesboro, Georgia. I'm Phil Van Horn. Happy to welcome you this afternoon to live football coverage here on Sports South and happy to be joined by Sam Smith today. The two teams, Georgia Southern and Florida A&M, Something somewhat unknown, especially with Georgia Southern. A traditional power, yes, but this year, Sam, ranked anywhere from third in the nation to unranked. Well, apprehension was the key word for both these coaches coming in, and now with this downpour, certainly who will fumble the least or give up the ball the fewest times but have a chance of winning this opening season game, and it will be a big lift for either one. Both coaches, I know, are raring to go, but they weren't ready for this rain. Well, conditions could not be worse to break in a new quarterback, and that's what Florida A&M has to do this afternoon. Keith Brown gets his first start as the Rattler quarterback. Well, Tony Ezel, of course, ran the FAMU attack for the last few years and did it very, very well. And, of course, Brown has not made a start, but he does today in the rain. They're going to try to keep it simple, and that means turn and hand the ball to Chuck Duffy. He's probably the best back that Georgia Southern will play against all year long. Nearly 1,000 yards in multi-yards, catching and running last year. Other side of the coin, the quarterback for Georgia Southern, no problem in experience. Charles Bostic, of course, four touchdowns against FAMU. He runs the option, and he's developed a stronger throwing arm, so he could use that if the rain lets up. They must get pressure on Brown, and that's where Alex Mash, a young man on the front line, a very good one, their top sack man, has to come in, put the pressure on Brown, because that's where the key to this game will lie. Well, Mash, only one of two starters returning from last year, and the task not easy, because in Chuck Duffy, they face a versatile running back, an outstanding runner and receiver. Well, that's one of our keys to the game, certainly, as go Chuck Duffy, so goes Florida A&M. If they can get his running game inside and then work him outside, it'll be a key. They also have to protect with that big line, 278-pound average, their quarterback Brown, but they also have to figure out how to stop the option or break the bone, if you will, of Georgia Southern. Georgia Southern keys on the other side of the coin. They, of course, must overcome some injuries on the defensive side where they least could afford it. Also, they must pressure Brown, and that's where Mash and company come in. And then they also have a half a secondary that has to grow up in a hurry. 8,500 snaps by their combo in the secondary last year. Only seven total by these four guys today. That's a problem. Boy, just look at the safeties. Rob Stockton dressing out for the first time. And on the other side, Don Hudson moving over from the offensive <laughs> backfield. Well, we have a sod soaker and a season opener here on Sports South. Green has let up just a little bit. That's good for the fans who are still filing in from the parking lot and good for the teams who will make their appearance on the field in just a moment. Well, throughout this afternoon's game, we'll have Jim Noble working the sidelines for us. Let's go down to Jim now. Hello, Jim. Hey, Phil, how are you doing? Now, I want to touch upon a thing that you guys mentioned in the open. All of the injuries on the defensive side of the ball for Georgia Southern. The Eagles' four best defensive players are banged up right now. They all should see action. We'll go ahead and show you those guys. Alex Mash, an All-American defensive end. He's got a sprained ankle. Just talk to the defensive coordinator. He is looking okay. He will not start, but he should go today. Linebacker Nick Davis, probably the worst hurt of the whole bunch. Davis is hurt also with an ankle sprain. He is going to try to go today, but they don't know how long he can go. Linebacker Darius Dawson underwent ankle surgery during the offseason, missed all of spring practice. He is going to start today. They'll keep a close eye on him. The other injured player, linebacker Paul Carroll, the spiritual leader of this defense, he's got a reoccurring neck injury, something the coaches and trainers like to call a stinger. Carroll looked pretty good during warm-ups. They will keep a close eye on him as well. We'll keep a close eye on the trainers and see how those players do as the game progresses. Phil. All right, Jim. After that thunder shower rushed through Statesboro, the rain has all but quit now. In fact, it has quit raining. And 
The opening coin toss, won by Florida A&M. They elect to receive. Set to kick off for Georgia Southern. Starting his first game, Reed Haley, a 5'11 sophomore from Clearwater, Florida. Back deep to receive for FAMU. Number 13, James Thurman to the near side and Jamie Bell to the top of the screen. And this is Thurman at the three. Struggles, gets back up to the 20 yard line. But whether a factor here, both with as much as Georgia Southern's offense runs the triple option and as much as FAMU puts the ball in the air. 82 degrees today, only a slight breeze because that shower just moved through the area in a hurry. Humidity 85%. And that surface is very wet, Sam. Phil, one of the things, they do have the PAT surface here at Georgia Southern. This is kind of a prototype for everybody building new stadiums. It drained very well. I don't uh, envision the footing to be bad, but throwing the football and on the ground could be a problem. Florida a &M opens with a one-back set. That's Chuck Duffy, the senior. Keith Brown, quick look. And Terry Mickens fights up near a first down. There's a flag right in front of the Georgia Southern bench. Not a lot of doubt what this is about. This is uh, a man hit out of play. This is rather interesting. Uh, FAMU comes out and very quickly opens up with a passing play rather than keep it, as they said, rather simple. There's a personal foul. It appears. It appears to be a late hit. We do have our umpire, Doc Graham, or rather our referee, Jimmy Askew, Mike, this afternoon. First low on the blue, first down. Get actually getting the ball out to Meekin, uh, Mickens, excuse me, in the open field, and that's what they want, and a clear come up and hit late there, and you saw the problem there with Don Hudson. Hudson, they converted this slot back into the secondary just hitting late. We'll spot that ball right at the 45. Excellent field position for Keith Brown, a junior from Gainesville, Florida, making his first start at quarterback. This is Duffy trying to cut back. And he'll lose three yards. Sean Harrelson in there to make the hit. Followed by number five, Darius Dawson. Let's take a look at the Florida A&M starting lineup. Keith Brown with Mitchell and Duffy. Terry Mickens, James Thurman, and Chad Fan all back from last year. This is a wide open offense and a huge, massive offensive line. The center Williams and Brown the tackle, both are 300 pounders. Second down. Looking for the screen and getting pressure. Brown looking deep, wide open, Davis. Touchdown, Florida A&M! Well, Davis got deep, and he was untouched, and they test that inexperienced secondary of Georgia Southern right away. Well, what they did, the secondary for Georgia Southern rolled up, and, of course, coming up to support the run, which they thought Brown was going to do, and obviously just breaking the man behind him, and it was easy touchdown, and you see Davis taking it in, and there was no one within 10 yards of him, an easy score early for FAMU. Only takes a minute to do it. Here's Tim Cameron for the kick. And it's good, and Florida A&M strikes quickly, one minute into the ball game. Let's take this time out. The Rattler offense wide open and on the move early in this game. Volunteers will soon be contacted. Back in Statesboro with the ensuing kick. Chris Wright scooting up near to the 30-yard line. Across the 30 where Georgia Southern's offense will take over. You know, Phil, when you see what FAMU did, not keeping it as, as simple as we thought they might, exactly what Brown was able to do to scramble and create things is what Bostick now must do for Georgia Southern. Create something on their side of the ball to try to get the momentum back now. Charles Bostick, a sophomore, started the first seven games a year ago. Lost his starting job, won it back with an outstanding spring game and fall practice. He's backed up ably by Joe Dupree, a transfer from the University of Georgia. We should see both here today. This is the fullback, James Williams, and that's the basis of the flex bone offense, the fullback straight ahead. Charles Bostick and his fullback, James Williams, the Thomasville connection, the slot backs, Payne, a junior, Shaft and Fraley, a fleet sophomore, Willis, and Chris Joyner, who will split time today with Terrence Sorrell. 
across the front of the line, Miguel Ayub and Rex Nottage to tackle, making their 30, or rather 27th consecutive starts on the offensive line. Here's second down. Shafton Fraley. Brought down after a gain of two. Florida A&M has an experienced defense across the front. We'll see three, but they'll mix it up. Erwin Collier, a transfer from Alabama. Lee Green is a converted linebacker. Of the linebackers, Ian Connor and Bruce Daniels inside, very active. But the strength of this defense, three returning starters, the defensive backs, the corners, Keno Taylor and Ken Riley, and the All-America candidate, William Carroll, the strong say a free safety is outstanding. Third down. Bostic has a man deep. That's Fraley. And the ball deflected. That's William Carroll batting it down. But it looked like Fraley had a couple of steps. One of the keys we made mention that Bostic had to do the same thing Brown did. And you see exactly. He broke off a pattern here. He wanted to drop back. Then he has to scramble with the pressure up the middle. And this was a well-thrown ball with the exception it hung just a little too late. And Carroll covers a lot of ground to knock this away. When the ball is in the open field and how well he covers is not a question. He covered very well there. Bill Thatcher seeing his first start as the Georgia Southern punter. He's a junior from right here in Statesboro. Back deep to receive Tyrone Davis. Side step, pretty step. And falls down up near the 27, the 28 yard line. We are just underway. Bam, you getting ready for their second possession. And the Rattlers lead Georgia Southern by a touchdown. Arizona State welcomes Washington. The Huskies are hungry to take the title. We're back in Statesboro, still early in the first quarter. Florida A&M coach Ken Riley had to like what he saw on the first possession for his new starting quarterback, Kit Keith Brown. Coach Riley wanting him to throw the ball early. He was able to have poise, scramble, and find the deep touchdown pass. Handle pressure and gain confidence were the two things he said Brown had to do early, and he's done that so far. Again, Duffy on a busted play. Here's Brown, and he has brought down Anthony Williams. Almost like he knew the snap count in that backfield in a hurry for a loss of six. Anthony, one of those junior college transfers that's certainly going to help this ball club, and they needed some help on the front line. And once they get well up on the front line, this could be a very, very solid front line for Georgia Southern, despite the fact that they're rebuilding. Terribly undersized that defensive line is. The Great Wall of Tallahassee. <laughs> Two 300-pounders, Kwame Kilpatrick, another tackle, just another trip to the salad bar under 300 at 295. And here's second down for Keith Brown. Chuck Duffy straight ahead. That'll bring up third down and long. While we've got a moment, we want to remind you that the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by Georgia Southern. Any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of this game without the written consent of Sports South and Georgia Southern and Creative Production Services is prohibited. You know, Phil, you made mention about the size of the different lines. Offensive line average, 278 and 64 for FAMU. Defensively, 61 and 220 for Georgia Southern. Again, the single back set. Brown. Intercepted, Brandon Roselle. Third pass of the game by Keith Brown is picked off. Roselle was the only man that had any experience, the young man from Stone Mountain, Georgia. He had taken all seven of the snaps of all four of the combination defensive backs, and he steps up. This is an ill-advised pass by Brown, and the fact it's thrown in, and look at the coverage that's around the lone receiver. And the interception by Roselle and Georgia Southern's on the attack now. Charles Bostic with James Williams behind him. Bostic wants to throw. Has a man, Willis. Tripped up by Ken Riley. But that ball thrown like a bullet. A step or two in front. You could see <laughs> Bostic just saying, just missed it. Let's go down to the field to Jim Noble. One thing we want to tell you about the Georgia Southern defense, coordinator Tommy Fangler, after that long scoring play, called his defense over, especially the cornerbacks. He said, guys, you have got to tighten up. Obviously, Brandon Roselle took that to heart, picking off the pass on that last drive. Phil? 
Willis at the bottom of the screen. Terrence Sorrell at the top. And here's Bostic. Straight ahead. Maybe a gain of three. That'll bring up third down. But we'll see early in this game, Sam, is a chess match. Georgia Southern trying to test and see what kind of defensive fronts they will see. Bostic has to look for a four-man front. The three down with four linebackers. And at other times, they'll even put five men down with two linebackers. What they must do is, of course, test all three of the options inside, on the outside of the offensive tackles, and, of course, wide. Bostic has Willis. First down, out of bounds at the 24. 12-yard completion and the first first down of the afternoon for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Nicely executed play, but did you see the nice bullet pass thrown by Bostic? He's been working on passing the ball. Now watch the way this ball stays on line. He steps up into the pocket, defensive lineman, and pushed the, uh, the offensive lineman, pushed him in, threw it right on the money to Willis, and that is an excellently thrown pass by Bostic, the quarterback. Bostic keeping. Follows a nice block, gain of six. Well, Tim Stowers calls it the big machine when it's working. That's that flex bone triple option offense. And well, here's an example. There's the first option, the middle back coming up the middle, Williams. The second option is what you see. The third will be the pitch to the wide man. Boston scoring four touchdowns on FAMU. They are well aware of what he can do against them. There's Tommy Spangler, the defensive coordinator, working with his defensive backs, 41. That's Hudson. On second down, Bostic has room. Up to the 10, down to the seven yard line. Big hole on that right side. You know, Phil, you made mention about them having to read so well out on the corners, and it's very difficult. Now watch the way this play starts to stretch out. You see the wide pitch man coming around, but look how the cornerback has to be so wide and then come in, and the quick feet of Bostic, he's through a hole and gone before he can react and knock him down. Here's first down and goal. We're still early in the first quarter. Eagles trailing by a touchdown, 7-0. Good pressure on the defense. Bostic, no place to go. Demetrius Boney, a linebacker, brings him down. One thing that FAMU wanted to try to do was not so much blitz and stunt in the middle, but blitz and stunt from the outside, and you see that's where the pressure came. Anything to turn Bostic inside and make him give up the football. They made mention, of course, they had to get it out of his hand, and in that particular play, they get a sack out of it. Bostic, no place to go. Good penetration. Ian Connor, the middle linebacker, top returning tackler for the Rattlers, gets penetration and drops it for another yard loss. Now it's just a matter of size against size, and the oversize of Florida A&M is beating Georgia Southern off the ball. You see how deep they penetrate into the backfield. Bostic doesn't even have a chance to kind of run up and make any kind of play whatsoever as uh, the good defense claps in on top of him. A big Irwin Collier, number 93, giving Bostic fits. A 6'4", 280-pound transfer from Alabama. Collier, the best defensive lineman they've had at FAMU, according to defensive coordinator Rick Kravitz. Here's Bostic on third down. No place to go. Good defense by the Rattlers and good coverage in the secondary. That'll bring up fourth down, and on comes Reed Haley for the field goal attempt. This will be kind of a shock for Georgia Southern fans not seeing David Cool run out there. So Haley's there, man of the moment. We'll see what he can do here on a field goal. This is not as good as getting a touch amount, but at least as easy as FAMU scored in the intercept, at least maybe getting some points on the board is a good sign for Georgia Southern. The holder is Bill Thatcher, the punter. He'll spot the ball down at the 16-yard line. It is good. Georgia Southern on the board. So the Eagles take a turnover, an interception, and turn it into three points. And midway through the first period, the Eagles trail 7-3. to three. Here in the South, we've always enjoyed a little different lifestyle, and we're proud of that. 
But one thing we do have in common with the rest of the country is our taste in pizza. Domino's Pizza is a favorite among Southerners. Though in keeping with tradition, we enjoy different things with our pizza. <laughs> Domino's, the official pizza of the South. Sports South. Hi, I'm Ron Zip, president of Hair Replacement Systems of Atlanta. For a limited time only, you can take the first step of our new gradual hair replacement system for only $950. That's right, only $950 for HRS to give you the first step of the natural-looking gradual step-by-step -step system. Whether you're a high-profile executive or a rugged sports enthusiast, HRS will make you look younger and feel more confident when you begin gradual hair replacement, and no one will notice. Take the first step. We've never made this offer before, and it's for a limited time. Remember, only $950 for the first step of our new gradual hair replacement. Do it now. Now's the time to get started with the new gradual HRS of Atlanta step-by-step -step system. This special offer ends soon. Operators are standing by. For more information, call HRS at 1-800-453-9600. That's 1-800-453-9600. Here's Tyrone Davis from his own end zone. Big hole to the 30. Davis at the 40 and brought down by the kicker, Reed Haley. Tremendous hole and good speed by Tyrone Davis, the senior from Mays High School in Atlanta. Outstanding field position for the Rattler offense and the quarterback, Keith Brown. There's one thing about it, Phil, in talking to all of the uh, FAMU coaches, they did not underestimate their return people. They said, we are loaded at that position. We feel comfortable, and Davis truly has shown he's one of the better ones right now. First drive of the game, Keith Brown two for two passing and connected on a 59-yard bomb for the score. Brown, inside pitch. This is Mickens. Terry Mickens across midfield and met head-on by Don Hudson. But Mickens showing good leg drive, keeps his feet and spins. One of the things Georgia Southern was anticipating was to Brown to air this ball out. You see how nicely he just dumps it underneath. He's got Lyman in front of him, and he made a good gain out of it. Look at that hit by Hudson. That was a head-on collision. After the interception, Georgia Southern takes the ball, goes 28 yards in nine plays, three and a half minutes, and Reed Haley caps it off for his first field goal of the season, and Georgia Southern trailing 7-3. A penalty flag on the, a late flag on the play, Sam. Second personal foul already against the Georgia Southern defense. On that play after Hudson had made the hit, apparently somebody else coming in as you see, of course, Coach Spangler there is the defensive coordinator. Personal foul on the blue. That hurts because this is outstanding field position. Tim Stowers team working itself in a hole here midway through the first period. Again, Chuck Duffy, the single back for Florida A&M. Quick look, here's Mickens. Big hit on the sideline. Mickens trying to get a block from James Thurman. A gain of about eight. Mickens their best runner when he gets the ball on the open field. That's exactly what they're trying to do. You saw him dump it underneath, now they just get it out to him early, and he gets a good hit on the sideline. One thing Florida A&M had indicated to us, they feel that their program is well on gear. If they had Tony Ezel, Ken Riley said this would be my best team ever. But he said we also must reach another plateau, the plateau that Georgia Southern plays on year in and year out. Coach Riley told us yesterday the key early for Keith Brown poise. And he's come back after throwing the interception. Here's Duffy. Good pursuit. Denied the first down. Looks like Scott Davis, one of those to arrive first for the blue shirts. Let's see if they measure. Now there's Keith Brown. He likes it, and he does get the first down. Let's go down to the sideline to Jim Noble. Guys, you were wondering about the presence of All-American defensive end Alex Mash. He has not been in the ball game yet. Uh, Georgia Southern trainer Doc Smith says, hey, his ankle is feeling OK. They just want to hold him out a little more. He should see action later on in the first half. Brown. Looking deep. 
That ball may have been tipped. It was underthrown. The intended receiver, number 13, James Thurman, at the goal line. I think you're right. I think Anthony Williams got a tip of that ball at the line of scrimmage. One of the things I was watching to see if Duffy, who was a good receiver out of the backfield, was going to flare out to the left. He appeared to do so, but then at the last moment he saw a defensive end coming, double back to help protect Brown, and thus he had to go deep. You know, coaches are funny. Uh, Sam, the offensive coordinator at Kent Schoolfield, tells us before the game, yeah, we might use the one back set. We'll probably open up in it. We have seen the one back set exclusively on yep. the opening two possessions for Florida A&M. They also said they'd keep it simple, which they have not done so far. 5-18 remaining in the first period. And on top, 7-3, to three, and in outstanding field position, second down and 10. Keith Brown, the junior quarterback of Florida A&M, wants to take a timeout. Accommodations provided by Days Inn Airport in Savannah, Georgia. Nominated Hotel of the Year with superior accommodations. Enjoy their restaurant offering, a selection of favorite dishes, Bailey's Floating Lounge, banquet facilities for up to 60 people, and an outdoor heated pool with jacuzzi. You'll appreciate the extra touches that make this Days Inn so special. Days Inn, Savannah Airport, a Merritt Dixon property. That was you swimming laps this morning, wasn't it, outside the, <laughs> outside the hotel door? <laughs> we could have swam laps on the <laughs> sideline when we were doing that opening today. You know, Ken Riley is one of those guys that has been around this game. Of course, he is from uh, Florida A&M and has come back to his alma mater, done a great job. Uh, the fourth all-time interception leader in the history of the National Football League. Got two very valuable years of coaching the NFL up at Green Bay under Forrest Craig. Had an opportunity to join Forrest at SMU. Felt it was not what he wanted to do. He's got a good program at FAMU and really is very, very happy with what he's doing right now with the Rattlers. I think the FAMU following can account for the strong yes. crowd turnout today despite the storm that swept through Statesboro and through Paulson Stadium in the pregame. Well, here's second down and 10. Keith Brown, an outstanding start. Plenty of time. The time runs out, and that ball's underthrown. There's Michael Morris. Michael Morris, the replacement for Alex Mash, finally getting off the block and getting some pressure. Morris going head up with Jamie Brown, outweighed by 100 pounds. You see how quick the Georgia Southern people are able to step around, finally getting inside, and look at the pressure they finally put on Brown. Brown did an excellent job of getting that ball out of there, not in the grasp, as a la the old NFL rule, but got it away, and Ken Stowers, even though his ball club's backed up to their goal line, got to be pretty happy right now forcing this third down play. Screen pass. Thurman fighting up to near first down yardage. That time, Georgia Southern bringing its line, the pass rush on third and long, and an Outstanding call, a heads-up call by Ken Riley. This is what they've tried to do. They've tried to string out that secondary, growing for Georgia Southern, and then dump it underneath. And you see how well the screen was set up. Well, look how quickly it goes upfield and a breakdown from behind. And diving in to make a good catch was Paul Carroll, who has been playing with a bad uh, neck all these last couple of years. And James Thurman is just short of that first down. This is a big play here early on. Fourth down and in inches. And the Rattlers will go for it. Now they bring in the power eye. A couple of fullbacks, Mike Mitchell and Pat Reddick. And Brown will call a timeout. Second timeout this early in the first period. We have 4.22 remaining in the first. Bamu trying to cash in on this outstanding field position with fourth down and just inches. You know, I'm kind of wondering what Brown saw. Obviously, Georgia Southern had seven men up on the line of scrimmage. But well, when you're looking over guys that would probably represent ice buckets compared to the refrigerator, William Perry, uh, they certainly quite obviously had an opportunity to take the ball straight ahead. I'm really kind of surprised he made that call. We see those threatening clouds on the horizon. Boy, it was pouring rain in the pregame huh. here, just pouring. Right now, the rain has stopped, rather humid, but otherwise, a pretty pleasant afternoon for football. Well, look what they've got on fourth down here, and look specifically at Florida A&M's offensive line and in the defensive line for Georgia Southern. 278 to 220, and you got to have that much weight advantage. Just push the ball. They don't have but inches to go. And this opportunity, especially with the power eye and the two fullbacks in there, just give Duffy the ball and go off behind one of those big tackles or behind that 300-pound senior center, Wally Williams. Oh, I'd, I wouldn't even take a chance of handing the ball off. If I were Brown, it's just straight ahead. Oh, 
That's it, Brown. First down. Well, we haven't talked much about Wally Williams yet, the, ce the center. They go right behind him. Wally, an outstanding athlete, runs a 4-8-40, 300 pounds, and they go right behind big number 63. And that is a big void when he clears it out of there. You know, he's also the punter, interesting enough, at 300 pounds, but so far the Rattlers haven't had an opportunity to punt the ball. They've been running it up and down the field. You think a big guy, okay, so he's quick, but is he athletic? You bet. He was drafted out of high school by the Montreal Expos to, as a first and third baseman. So Wally Williams, an outstanding athlete, along with his duties along the line. Now, wait a minute. We'll talk about that one in a minute. Brown. Oh. oh. Full extension. That's Chad Pham, the tight end. But he couldn't haul it in at the 10. That'll bring up second down. Well, the Ole Miss uh, Rebel transfer almost came up with a big, big catch here. Brown throwing this one on a pretty good string, but you can see just out of the reach of Pham. But what a great, great effort. You said Williams now is drafted as a first baseman and a third baseman. That's the left side and the right side of an infield. Not at the same time. Oh, okay. <laughs> either place he played, he covers up either side. You know what I mean? It's possible with him. <laughs> but this is offensive line. It's possible. Second down and 10. Brown again to the air. Plenty of room. That's fan. Maybe a gain of one. The Georgia Southern defenders want it inco called incomplete. As Pham makes the catch, the man right on top of him is Stockton. As we made mention, waiting to get his start, a four-point grade point average student here at Georgia Southern. He was a red shirt in 91, but he uh, just right in the midst of catching the ball fan, he was hit very sharply by Rob Stockton. Here's third down at the 11. Brown six of 10 so far, 100 yards in the air, has one touchdown in the interception. Brown, touchdown to Fan. Threaded the needle beautifully, and Florida A&M cashes in. Well, that has to be called a fan fair, as they quite obviously went to him on three consecutive plays. The one he overthrew, the one he made the catch on, and now this one. Well, you talk about threading the needle. He did a great job, and Fan just inside. The strong safety and the free safety there making the catch in the end zone. Nice play by Florida A&M. With three minutes remaining in the first, Tim Cameron for his second point after attempt. And it's good. Florida A&M marching down the field with a wide open offense. You can see the protection. Look how much room Williams has. Nobody around him, so there's no penetration. And when Brown has that much room and that much time to throw, he can throw to the outside, he can throw to the inside, and has a wide open fan for an easy touchdown to the Rattlers there. Keith Brown, a pair of touchdowns already in his first college start. Florida A&M off to a fast start against Georgia Southern. One note to note here about uh, FAMU is the fact that last year they averaged 383.7 yards as far as their offense is concerned. But a concern of Ken Riley, they gave up 331 and a half yards. So yes, they do score, but they weren't able to stop a lot of people a la what happened in the Georgia Southern FAMU game last year. Boston scores four times. Georgia Southern wins 28-21 in Tallahassee. The last year, Tony Ezell, the senior, passed for 269 yards against Georgia Southern. That's the most yards they gave up passing all year. And that was a good uh, combination de a secondary for Georgia Southern. Too. All seniors a year ago. Hmm. This is Chris Wright at the 11. Has some speed around the 30. And knocked out of bounds at the 32-yard line. Good return by Chris Wright. On the scoring drive, Chad Fan, the big man, 59 yards and 10 plays. Fan on the receiving end, 10 yards from Keith Brown. It took only four minutes. They marched down the field and converted on that big fourth and inches with Brown just burrowing right behind his center, Wally Williams. You know, it appeared that Georgia Southern had taken a little of the momentum away by at least getting three points, but boom, aided by another roughing penalty. Bostic his second possession. That's James Williams sporting through. Maybe a gain of six. Nice hole off the left side. You know, Phil, they really have given him some big shoes to fill. Gerald Harris on a couple of their national championship teams and also Joe Ross and certainly Eford last year. They said if he plays to his potential, he can be as good, if not better, than many of those players. That's some big, big shoes to fill for fullback Williams. 
James Williams, the starting fullback. We also look forward to seeing the true freshman, Terry Lester, a fullback. This is Williams once again, and he goes nowhere. Number 79, Marcus Lampkin. Big 270-pounder from South Bay, Florida, a senior right there to make the stop. People that have watched Georgia Southern over the years, and of course, it is grinded out football. You establish the running game, it opens the option. What happens, it starts doing, is you say eight yards on four carries for Williams. If he can establish a running game inside, it opens up the pitch man, or at least the option, for quarterback Boston. Third down for Bostic. Has a man, that's Sorrell. Hit hard, loose ball. They're going to call him down, or is that whistle In dead? Incomplete, I think they're going to call now, huh? Two separate signals. One official says complete and ball dead. His knee was down. The other motioned incomplete pass. Let's take a, a look once again. Good rollout here by Bostic, and again, that stronger throwing arm, and that, of course, is a good direction to run and throw. Sorrell is open in the flat here. Got in front of the corners and just in front of the safeties. Made the catch, it appeared, and then dropped the ball. That could be a very questionable call either way. I thought he made the catch and just had the knee down. Well, here's Reed Haley with his second boot of the afternoon, standing back near the 30. Back to receive, Tyrone Davis. Wobbly kick. Good coverage by Georgia Southern, and it hops out of bounds inside the 20. But once again, we'll see if Georgia Southern's defense can solve this multifaceted, wide open Florida A&M offense. One of the things that uh, Coach Riley told us in our conference meeting yesterday, Phil, was with Tony Ezel, when he came out as a freshman, he had some seniors. He finally made the decision in the Delaware State game of his freshman year to let him become his quarterback of the future. He said it took him almost that entire year, the next year, to kind of establish. We asked him, have you put a timetable on Brown? He said, I still feel it's a year for him to really know what I want him to do at FAMU. Well, pregame, coaches were uncertain how much Brown would play today, and they were had Tracy Weldon, his backup, standing by. And a quick look and a completion. But Keith Brown has looked sure of himself in the first period of this game. Good coverage on the corner this time as they just try to isolate a back on the left side and get it out there. And you see how quickly the support comes. The, the pass was low and had to be fielded low. And, of course, the catch was made before the, the defender got there. James Thurman, number 13, yep. wearing his coach's old number. Thurman, a Rhodes Scholar nominee, the second in school history. And, and Sam, who was the first? <laughs> Ken Riley. The coach. Here's second down and eight. There's a flag. Brown looking deep has a man. Oh, what a nice play. Marco Bradham bats it down. The freshman from Savannah High School, pretty play by Marco Bradham. That one had six points written all over it, but flags are down. You have to see Brown scrambling out here. Brown not the strongest of their two throwers. Weldon is that one. You see him throwing off the back foot and really got nailed. And then, of course, Bradham on the other end to knock it away just out of the outstretched hands that time of Keith Kelly. But look like Anthony Williams, big number 75, the junior defensive lineman for Georgia Southern, really dished out some punishment to Keith Brown. You know, Ken Stowers has to be happy. If he's getting pressure from the people that are not normally as starters with mash out and getting some other good play on that front line, that's a real key for them this early in the season. Williams attended. Got an illegal participation against the white. Replay, third down. Anthony Williams played at high school powerhouse Valdosta down in South Georgia. But also returning home, Bruce Daniels, the linebacker for Florida A&M, a former teammate at Valdosta. A couple of kids from Valdosta on F I uh, Florida A&M said, be sure to tell them we're from Valdosta, will you please? They, they were jacked will. up. Daniels <laughs> made a point of coming up to us before the game to let us know he was into this one. Third down and long. Plenty of time. Stockton almost picked it off. Rob Stockton had it in his hands. Brown is starting to, he's starting to pressure himself now. He's starting to do things, and I, maybe the calls are coming from the sideline, but he's not looking for the under, under people to throw to. He's trying to air it all out. Certainly they must feel that the secondary is suspect, and it has been so far. But if I were the coach on the other side, I'd kind of get that confidence back for Brown, dump underneath, get some good plays, and let him regain himself. We're going to look at Williams for the first time. Punting. 
Big Wally Williams, a 300 pounder. This is Reggie Roby to the max, the huge <laughs> NFL punter. Williams from his own end zone, gets pressure. This is Brandon Roselle at the 40. He cannot shake the first man down, Chris White. And again, outstanding field position for Georgia Southern, and you can hear the crowd now start to get into it for the home team. Good defensive stand by the Eagle defense. Very good, and they deserve what they're getting coming off the field. And how about uh, Tommy Spangler's adjustments that uh, Jimmy was telling us about earlier as they've rolled up the corners, getting more support, and they've done a good job. Even though FAMU has tried to sting them long, they've covered well. Sam, let's take a look at the defensive front. We see four men down now. Charles Bostic looking at four down linemen. Wants to throw. Ball tip. Batted at the line of scrimmage. at 75, Doby Ingram. He's a backup nose man, but when they go to four down linemen, as they did on that play, it's Ingram and Lampkin in the middle. His eyes had to light up Bostic because with the fourth down lineman, it means he has less people in the secondary covering, putting a down man down. And of course, as he looked over the top, he did get the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage, but he knew there was going to be somebody loose, but the ball tip certainly kept it out of the range of Georgia Southern catcher. Not much. Stopped at the line of scrimmage again, right into the heart of that FAMU defense. Final seconds of the first quarter ticking away. You know, we've seen Bostic and James Williams throughout the first for Georgia Southern. About now, we start to think, when will we see Joe Dupree, perhaps in the second period, or when will we see Terry Lester? Well, after an exciting first quarter for Florida A&M, that high-powered offense marching up and down the field, the Rattlers lead 14-3. to As we open the second period from Statesboro, Georgia, the Eagles have outstanding field position at the 40, but as we come back from the break for the period, Sam, we need some more time to sit and think about this. Georgia Southern has called timeout. And Charles Bostic, the quarterback, has stepped over to the sideline to talk to David Saunders, the backfield coach. And there's Mike Hodges, the offensive coordinator, down there at midfield. One of the reasons he did is because FAMU came out with six down linemen. All right, let's go down to the sideline. Here's Jim Noble. Guys, an indication that the Georgia Southern defensive staff may be getting pretty nervous. They're going to send All-American defensive end Alex Nash back into the ballgame when the Southern defense takes the field. Defensive line coach Cliff Lewis said, Alex, simply, you have got to make something happen on defense. Back to you. Jim? Well, let's pick up some of the defensive adjustments now that FAMU is making. They come out opening the second period with six linemen, six across the front. Charles Bostic takes a look and says, hold on a minute, he needs to talk to Coach Hodges. Particularly when he got a third down and 10, obviously it was probably gonna be a passing play, but how much pressure and who was gonna pick up those six down linemen had to be his big concern. So wisely takes a timeout. By the way, let me, let me pass out some plaudits both to FAMU and also to Georgia Southern. Both those universities and the Southern Conference and the Southeast area are very cognizant of what's happened in the Miami area and they have established a Hurricane Andrew Fund, and it's 1-800-FL-HELP-1. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I salute both these universities for their help to those people in Miami. If you'd like some more information, we'll have that number for you again yes. in the second half. Here's Bostic checking off again, now with four down linemen. Now the clock runs out on it. Well, you can hear a few boos ring out from the crowd. Here's Charles Bostic pleading his case to coach Tim Stowers and to Mike Hodges. Let's get that 1-800 number again. It's 1-800-354-3571. Again, that's to help the Hurricane Andrew. Bostic in the crowd here at Allen Paulson Stadium, sitting on a hands right now. This is Bill Thatcher. Tyrone Davis, fair catch at the 11. Well, Keith Brown coming on in his first start, the junior quarterback, has done a good job of two things, Sam. Spreading it out and just maintaining his poise. First drive, we see him short passes to his wideouts. Second drive, utilizes his running back, Chuck Duffy. Second touchdown, utilizes his tight end. Well, the way he's been able to throw it, you'd never know there was some rain here early. And the way the fans have spread out across the grass, it's just a beautiful afternoon for football here in Statesboro. 14 to three, the Rattlers leading Georgia Southern early in the second quarter. 
Quick look, Terry Mickens across the 20, near the first down, but he'll be shy of the first down. Bill, I love the question you asked uh, Coach Schoolfield there, their offensive coordinator. As you take a look at Alex Mash in there, you can see him limping on that ankle. You said, is it difficult to get all of your weapons in there? Let's see how Mash does. Takes head on a good size. Well, look at the quickness of this young man, despite the ankle, coming from the offside and heading for a tackle. Good Mash play. checks in at 243 pounds. He's going opposite Jamie Brown, a big 6'8", 300-pound sophomore. Again, the quick look. Terry Mickens gets upfield. First down and then some across the 30. The first quarter, Keith Brown connecting on 8 of 13 and two quick passes, and they're out of from deep in their own territory. This is the call to fish the safeties up. Now they have to start coming up and supporting the corners. If they're going to work with Mickens on the wide receiver, the other one, James Thurman, on the outside, and the minute you do that, it's Blaze, and they're gone. Some other scores this afternoon at Death Valley at Clemson. The Tigers leading the Ball State Cardinals. Alabama on top, Vanderbilt early in the SEC. You know, this week in practice, we talked about that huge offensive line of Florida A&M. Tim Stowers took, <laughs> there's plenty of water left over from the storm we had before this game. Good conditions right now, but in practice this week, Sam, they took Ronald Johnson. He was opposite Jamie Brown, the 6'8", 300-pounder. They took a defensive lineman and put someone on top his shoulders <laughs> <laughs> to give him an idea of what he would be facing this afternoon. And probably let Boston try to throw over it, too, which was interesting. <laughs> Good, Good bootleg. Brown should have zipped it. Lofted that ball, the intended receiver, fullback Mike Mitchell. Well, Mitchell's going to go back to the huddle, and they're going to have a serious conversation about that one because he was ahead of the pack and had been well set up. Watch this play-action fake. Duffy is such a threat, you have to respect it. Look where the linebacker's totally frozen inside. Then it opens up to the outside and the secondary trying to react as they spread it out. But look at this pass. It was floated nicely, but again, that's just a timing and an early season mistake by a quarterback. Third down and eight. Fakes the draw to Duffy. They'll scream to him. Good defensive pursuit by Georgia Southern. I've really been kind of waiting to see how long they were gonna wait to use that play. First time they've used it today. First impact, linebacker Dexter Perkins, a junior college transfer from North Greenville to JC in South Carolina. Again, they freeze the linebackers with a fake up the middle. Then Duffy just splits out, comes to the flat. He's got blockers in front of him, but you can see it's just the one man, and that's Williams, and there's three guys out there. He can't block them all, and he really didn't do a good job of making the one block to spring him loose. There's the big center, Wally Williams, back for his second punt. Let's see if the Eagles get pressure. Oh, got a hand on it. Out of bounds. Pretty blocked by Georgia Southern, and they had containment. That's Maurice Reed, a free safety, breaking loose and knocking it out of bounds. The Eagles should have outstanding field position when we return with 12 minutes remaining in the first half. Southern Eagles trailing 14-3, but they have the ball in outstanding field position. It's the first of lots of football action today here on Sports South. Later tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern, Moorhead State takes on rival Marshall. The Thundering Herd ranked second preseason, finished runner-up a year ago. This game, our game today, Sam, the first of a big live triple header here on Sports South. The Washington Huskies finished unbeaten a year ago. They play then after Moorhead and Marshall. Only two first downs for Charles Bostic in the first quarter. James Williams squirting behind the line, maybe a gain of three. You saw something there, Phil, that you would not have seen a year ago, and that was a audible at the line of scrimmage by Bostic himself. He has a list of about three or four plays that he can call in an audible situation like that, and he quickly thought he spotted something in the middle to get uh, Williams loose in the middle, but it didn't work for more than the two yards, but at least he's picking up more of a leadership of his ball club. Bostic nearly runs into Fraley, has a man wide open and he under overthrows. That's Will Lando Ficklin off the pump fake of beauty and Ficklin was open and that had six. Ficklin, one of those players they relied on last year before an injury sidelined him, but 
Again, Bostick set up through well on balance. He just overthrew his man. That indeed did have six all over him. That's uh, our first look at number 23, Willando Ficklin, a junior from Atlanta, Redan High School. He's an outstanding baseball player, led the Southern Conference last year in hitting 401, an all league designated hitter. Big third down right here early in the second quarter. Bostick squirts out. Shakes free from one, but he'll be shy of the, thir of the first down. Southern actually came back with what looked like to be that same play as Ficklin was heading to the flag in the corner of the end zone left. Sorrell had lined up to the near side, but he was not underneath. And as the Brain Trust tried to signal one in the last time, they now have a big fourth down play, and, and Bostick's still out there. They're going to go for it here. Fourth down and five. Bostic getting backside pressure. Oh, your ball is loose. Picked up, they can advance it. Big play by the Florida A&M defense. Sam Stockton picks it up, and the Rattlers have the ball at the 40, and Charles Bostic taking some heat right now from the Georgia Southern fans. I think it also has a little heat for the coaching staff to be making a call like this. There is still 10 minutes to go in the half. You're down 14 to three. And again, Boston just kept retreating, didn't have any place to throw good coverage in the secondary. And now FAMU, once they had given up the momentum with great field position, now they've taken it right back with a fumble to recovery of their own. I think what's most, most frustrating for Georgia Southern right now, Lee Green making the big hit on Bostic is that the last two plays of Bostic reminiscent of last year's frustration. Inside handoff, good contact. The powerful running for a gain of three, that's Mike Mitchell, the converted halfback. But you've got to take your hat off to the junior quarterback, Keith Brown of Florida A&M. He has showed poise, he's shown confidence, and he's run the attack very well so far. Fake to Chuck Duffy. Again, the timing just a step off that, a half step behind Mike Mitchell, but he was open. You also see what the offensive coordinator, Kent Schoolfield, has done now. They haven't tried to string it out so far. Now they're starting to dump it underneath again. And uh, that's one of the things that will once again rekindle that confidence in Brown that he had so, so well in the first quarter. You know, Sam, what's amazing as we talked to coaches this weekend, what they said, he was not firmly entrenched as the quarterback. But boy, you couldn't tell that by his performance here in the first half. Well, he knows that Tracy Weldon's waiting if he doesn't perform. Oh, and he'll go down. That's Williams, Anthony Williams with a big play on defense. And Sam here on the Georgia Southern sideline, we can see the backup quarterback, Joe Dupree, warming up. But let's take a look at this play. Well, they just virtually untouched. Uh, Williams coming straight up, and it was the center, uh, Wally Williams, 300 pounds, that was supposed to pick him up. He didn't even touch him. Great play there by Anthony. Let's see if they can get their hand on this punt again. Wally Williams at his 38. Minimal rush. Brandon Roselle going to let it hit and it goes into the end zone well Joe Dupree the backup quarterback warming up on the sideline he's a transfer from the University of Georgia much anticipation will we see him he is headed out we'll take a look when we come back a potent running attack and a strong defensive secondary leads Virginia Tech against reigning Peach Bowl champion East Carolina. Live next Saturday on Sports Up. Jane, you ignorant slut. Live from New York, it's Saturday night. Why don't you watch, Eddie? Every night can be Saturday night with this all-new home video collection packed with the funniest moments from each year of Saturday Night Live. A collection you can only get from Time Live Video. I Belder. Well, isn't that special? 
Your collection starts with the 1975 season starring the original not ready for primetime players at the low price of just $9.99. That's $10 off. Other videos will follow, one about every six weeks. Buy only the ones you want, and your first video is just $9.99. Hello. It's time to laugh again with the not ready for primetime players. So call now. To order your best of Saturday Night Live video, call 1-800-533-1400 or send $9.99 plus $3.23 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. It's the launching pad for racing greats. But under the hot lights at Richmond, anything can happen. They'll turn it up the wick again at the Bush Grand National Auto Light Platinum 200. Friday night at 7.30 on Sports Up. Because of a good defensive stand, Georgia Southern trailing by only 14-3 early in the second quarter. Starting quarterback Charles Bostic has been extremely ineffective. Hit on only one pass for 11 yards, and because of that, early in the second quarter, Bostic comes out of the lineup, and there's a change. Joe Dupree, six foot two inches, 192 pounds from Macon, Georgia. Originally, he signed out of high school to play at the University of Georgia for Ray Gaw. But when they changed quarterbacks and changed the system from running to throwing, Dupree transferred here, and we see his first snap as the Georgia Southern Eagle. The draw. Dupree at the 30. Fumbles, but the Eagles recover. I think he was already down. At least the headlines went already spotted him down. What an auspicious debut. Nice. You see, it's just a delayed draw by the quarterback. There was nothing on the end of that play. It was strictly to get him loose, get him in the middle, and you see how well he can run with the ball. And he was down with the knee before the ball got loose. But Joe Dupree has arrived at Georgia Southern. He wants to run it again. Squirts up to near the 40-yard line, gain of three. Dupree had one start, played in five games as a true freshman for the Georgia Bulldogs. Here's an example of his running ability. There's that fake up the middle again, trying to get Williams. This is the second part of the option. The pitch is the third, and Dupree can run the option. He has been running with the first team off and on throughout the practice session. And again, a mid-Georgia high school player of the year at Macon Southwest. Young man can play. Dupree looking deep. Under the coverage, that's Henry Parrish out of bounds. Officials say he juggled the ball incomplete, and Parrish is unhappy. Got to give the official credit. He was right on top of the play. And again, we were blocked out by the sidelines. We could not make an accurate call from up here, but the official, both were taken. Let's see if we get a little better look at it here. Okay, there's the fake. Dupree rolling back. Good protection against that big, big defensive line. Kind of a little dying quail out here, though. There's the catch. And again, he was fumbling, and he did get his foot down, but referees say he was fumbling it before he went out of bounds. Third down and seven. Dupree getting pressure. Loose ball. Was his arm going forward? Well, no indication immediately from the officials. Yep, must have. Well, that'll bring up fourth down, and that's the end of the first possession for Joe Dupree. Well, we made mention how well the offensive line had kept that big defensive line out of there. Not Fourth enough down. time this time. Backside uh, protection breaks down, and the arm definitely was coming forward. Bill Thatcher for his fourth attempt. No pressure. Back deep, Tyrone Davis on the run. Uh, he'll let it hit and field it at the 25. Davis makes a couple of yards at it, and there's another flag flying from the near sideline. This could very easily be an illegal block or a personal foul, particularly where it is thrown with a punt on the opposite side of the field, almost right in front of the FAMU bench. By the way, one reminder is our folks down in Sunshine Network are also viewing this game, that you'll have an opportunity for those of you in the Miami area to see this FAMU ball club in person as they'll play the Miami Hurricanes and that'll be September the 19th, and it will be seen on Sunshine. I'll have the pleasure of working with Nat Moore and Joe Rose, both former Dolphins, and calling the play-by-play -play of that one again. Getting a good look at number one Miami against Ken Riley and his Rattlers on the 19th. Well, the success so far by Ken Riley and his quarterback, Keith Brown, has precipitated two moves by Georgia Southern. Locking in the back on the white. 
First down. Two moves on the Eagle defense. One was bringing in Alex Mash, the All-America, and the other now linebacker Nick Davis, number 42 into the lineup. Davis has a sprained right ankle. He was questionable he would play at all today. But Davis and Mash, the two best defensive players, in there with injuries in this circumstance. Seventh possession by FAMU with Brown still at the quarterback. Nice hole off the right side. Pat Reddick, the fullback. Clock on the move under eight minutes to play in the first half. You know, they told us that Reddick might have a big game because uh, they, they concentrate so much on Duffy. And that opens up guys like Mitchell and certainly Reddick, who's been just chomping at the bit to get back in the starting lineup spot. And you see how good he's a good slashing right. They got some great backs in that backfield for a frame you. Second down. Here's Duffy. Back across the original line of scrimmage. Gain of about five. That'll bring up third down. You know, one thing that Don Hudson is going to bring to that secondary, he's a little nasty back there. He'll come up and smack you no matter what size you are. He's number 41. They converted slot back, and he's really kind of unselfishly kind of taken it. And uh, this guy's not playing offense or defensive line for FAMU. What's the deal here? He matches him in size, doesn't he? He wines and dines with that FAMU offensive <laughs> line. I'll tell you what, when those fellows go out to eat, they draw attention. That, by the way, was seats 9 and 10 here in the stadium, by the way. Well, let's see what that offensive line can do here to perhaps buy time or open a hole on third down. Brown again. That's Duffy, and that's shy of the first down. Looks like Darius Dawson, a linebacker, in on the stop. I think they're really happy to see Dawson coming back. He missed the spring with a fractured right ankle. Well, look as the linebackers drop into the coverage, and of course, getting some bottom side help as well. But Dawson dropping back there and doing a good job for Georgia Southern. Darius Dawson getting credit. Huey Hunt from nearby Hinesville also in on the stop. Hunt, a freshman at six feet. Well, here's Brandon Roselle back to receive the Wally Williams punt. Eagles up, 10 men on the line. Let's see if they go for it. Good pressure. <laughs> Looked like Parrish got a hand on it, but Williams, punt fielded by Roselle. He spins up near the 30-yard line. How did he not get that punt, Sam? Wow, and the FAMU fans, if you watch this, a key to the whole thing is if the a player that's trying to block gets a piece of the ball, he can make contact with a punter. Watch as Williams. Here's that two steps. Here comes the big kick. Now watch as the ball is tipped, and there then comes the contact. That's where the contact came after the ball was tipped. It was still a good punt up the field by Williams, a solid punt for him. But you got to give him credit for getting that much on the ball and kept it in a spiral despite getting the pressure. Well, here's Joe Dupree for his second series. The pitch, James Williams. Up to the 40, first down and out of bounds in front of the Rattler bench. You know, Phil, you had made mention looking at Williams and, of course, comparing him to Harris and Ross. One thing Joe Ross did so well that you made mention, once he broke the line of scrimmage, he was able to use his very fleet-footedness to do a good job, and I hope that's what Williams needs to do, and they're trying to showcase him a little bit by getting the ball to him on the outside and doing a good job as he runs here for Georgia Southern. So the bread and butter of a flex bone triple option is that fullback straight ahead or the counter option, or the pitch. Dupree by himself, across the 50, across the 45, and that'll put the fans on their feet in appreciation of the spark by Joe Dupree. There's one thing I hope that Charles Bostic does not take this personally. I mean, he has been replaced by Dupree. The teammates on the field right now are blocking harder than they've ever blocked, not to say that they didn't for Bostic, but they want Dupree to come in and have a good showing. When Boston gets back in, they'll do the same. But right now, this Georgia Southern Ball Club is pulling together very well. Over 10 yards of carry already for Dupree. Gets pressure, keeps his feet. Dupree at the 40. Across the 30, he makes one miss. Joe Dupree, 44 yards. Joe Dupree electrifies Paulson Stadium. What a, what a debut. 
unbelievable in the fact that he got out of as much trouble as you see the pressure right up the middle from Green. And look at Dupree. Now, one of the keys, he gets a block that is just right there. We'll pick up a number in a moment, but that was the key block that gave him the touchdown. He also had Sorrells down about the 10-yard line had he been needed. A touchdown and a big one for Southern. Reed Haley, and it's good. Five and a half minutes remaining in the first half. Hey, we've got a game here. The spark by Joe Dupree, and the Eagles trail 14 to 10. Dupree, the sophomore from Macon, Georgia, sprints 44 yards, and the Eagles trailing 14-10 as we approach halftime here at Statesboro. Dupree so far, Sam, has carried the ball four times for 78 yards in the score. Welcome to big time football at Georgia Southern. He's probably happy he transferred. And you can welcome this crowd. Very football smart crowd here in Statesboro, and they're up and appreciative. At the 10. Jamie Bell up near the 30. There's a flag down. We'll take a look at that. But Joe Dupree doing a lot of it by himself, but he gets some help downfield. Again, he gets the pressure rolling out here. And there you see the pressure coming from the inside. Nothing from the outside, and this is the key to it. They tried to pressure up the middle. Dupree does the best. Here's a block right there, and I think it's going to be one of the uh, sprint backs. It may have been Fraley doubling back number 12 to make the block he needed. You see Sorrell, if he's needed at the goal line, he was not, and Dupree with a beautiful touchdown run. On the drive, only three plays in 46 seconds. Joe Dupree, 44 yards. First down. Had trouble picking up that call. May have been illegal use of hands against Florida A&M. That'll set them back inside the 20. First down and 10 at the 19. 520 remaining in the first half. Florida A&M put two touchdowns on the board in the first quarter and have been shut down since. Keith Brown has Mickens. Nice juke across the 20 and the sure tackle and maybe a late hit by Fan and there's the flag. The tight end, Chad Fan, looks like he just knocked Brandon Roselle on his duff, but after the whistle. That time the linebackers try to support if indeed Brown was going to roll out. They did not filter back into the zone of which Georgia Southern is playing right now. Anytime you get it to Mickens, as you see in the open field, and there clearly is the late hit thrown by Chad Fan, the tight end. Again, underneath the zone, you see how much room he had. Dawson finally gets some help to bring him down. Deep back there by Branham. And then the personal foul on the late hit. Personal against the white. That's going to be first and 25. But right now, Florida AM stopping itself with two penalties. Let's go down to the sideline. Here's Jim Noble. Guys, when Joe Dupree went into the game a few minutes ago, you could feel this entire Georgia Southern sideline just lift up. When he scrambled for the touchdown, the place exploded. But good point, Sam. Charles Bostic should keep his head up because they say he most likely will go back into the ball game later. All right, Jim, thank you. Here's Keith Brown on first and a whole bundle. Tucks it in. Hit hard. A gain of about six. That's one of the few times we've seen Brown just tuck it in and see what he could do for himself. You know, I tell you what, he is showing a great deal of poise under fire here. Now, they have not had good success in their last four possessions, having to punt it away. There's the pump, and you see how big the hole is up the middle of the lineman had done the job. Then he kind of jukes a couple of players out of, the, out of the way. Backside gets him. But Brown showing still a great deal of confidence, poise, and control, and that's what Coach Riley's looking for for FAMU. Brown wants it again. There's Fan. Threw it into some traffic. Don Hudson, the senior safety there for Georgia Southern in coverage. You know, he can't wait to make his first interception as a defensive back. He, of course, has been a great one at a slot back or A back here at Georgia Southern. And, you know, it's rather uh, unselfish of him. He had a good career going as a slot back. They needed help in the secondary. He said, hey, I'm the guy who can help you. He's back there. That's a great move by Don Hudson, number 41. Hudson played running back as a junior, was a backup defensive back as a sophomore, a running back as a freshman. Yep. Third down and 19. 
Chuck Duffy on the draw. Plenty of room. Hit hard near midfield, but that's shy of the first down. Duffy gain of about 13. That's really the Chuck Duffy we've been waiting to see more of as they end the little inside handoff. You see Fan up the field, but not doing much in a block, and actually Duffy just does it all on his own. Well, after some indecision and the Florida A&M players urging Coach Riley to go for it on fourth down, here's Wally Williams for his fifth attempt in the FAMU punt team. No, Coach Riley not going to buy that one, folks. <laughs> Ten Eagles at the line, and the rush. Williams high, and Brandon Roselle camps at the 20 for the fair catch. Well, trotting out again, there he is, number four, Joe Dupree for only his third series. Already Dupree on four runs, 78 yards, and that electrifying 44-yard touchdown. Tim Stowers working on the sideline with both Dupree and Bostic, but not wasting any time getting to his backup when the offense was bogged down under Dupree. And did it with that poker face, as always, by Ken Stowers. Dupree talking, making adjustments as Willis up the top. The ball is loose, the fumble. And Georgia Southern recovers. It looked like Dupree was concentrating on his receiver to the top of the screen, Darren Willis. And dropped it on the snap. Never really got the clean handoff here, and this was something we would have expected to see in the first two series, and maybe not the third. Again, Dupree is there. I'm not so sure that, uh, oh, the center got back on it? No, it looked like Dupree was able to recover. Scott Chapin getting the start, or rather Rusty Parrish in there now. Yes. But Scott Chapin got the start today. James Williams straight ahead on second down. Not much there. Rusty Parrish started 26 consecutive games, all of them as a junior, 15 as a sophomore. But today, that string cut short as Scott Chafin, a junior, worked his way into the starting lineup. Now the way the option play works here for Georgia Southern, that was what is called the setup play. Certainly they had to waste one with the fumble. That was a setup play. Now you can either see for him to roll the ball out with, with of course, Dupree on the uh, option or throw the ball here underneath. Approaching two minutes in the first half. Dupree, high and wide. The intended receiver, Chris Wright, the slot back. That'll bring up fourth down, and that's the first ineffective possession for Joe Dupree this afternoon. And it wasn't so much that he threw the ball that poorly. He knew that he did not have a clear shot having to throw that far across the field. I think he wisely threw that one away and out of, out of bounds. You can see Dupree working with number 50, Rusty Parrish, the center, and Mike Hodges, the offensive coordinator. Back to punt, Bill Thatcher. 155 remaining first half. From the 40. Jamie Bell, and he's dropped right there. So Keith Brown, the junior quarterback, will get the ball with 147 remaining in the first half. And his offense has been limited in its effectiveness, penalties on the last drive, but limited in its effectiveness here in the second quarter, whereas in the first period, he came out 8 for 13 and really had Ken Riley's offense moving up and down the field. You know, we talked to Coach Riley about the size of his ball club. He said if a big guy is executing, he can beat the little guy all day long. If he's not executing, the little guy will outquick him, and that's what's happening. Georgia Southern's getting around F. Fanny right now. That's Chad Fan stops. Nice cut, but he's dropped Darius Dawson in coverage for Georgia Southern. Two receivers up to the top. Keep an eye on number 81, Terry Mickens. Split up to the top, the second receiver. He's in motion. Second down. Brown getting pressure and goes down. Looks like Ronald Johnson credited with the stop. Loss of about two. That was set up by Mash, and Ken Riley knows now that Mash is in the ball game, he is now getting the penetration from Georgia Southern and is really concerned that his offensive lineman not able to contain a very good charge from the Eagles. Well, the Eagle defense and coordinator Tommy Spangler calling timeout with a minute 12 remaining in the first half. The Eagles trailing 14 to 10. You can see Spangler there in the huddle with a, with a mighty crew cut. 
<laughs> right there, rubbing his noggin, working with the defense. By the way, Spangler has a couple of new coaches that he's working with this year. Eddie Garfinkel has been added to the staff as a linebacker coach, and Harold Nichols is aiding with the defensive line, also offensively with the quarterbacks and fullbacks. Coming from Southwest Texas State that had great success in years past is Peter Thurman. So three new coaches for Georgia Southern under Coach uh, Ken Stowers. Well, in the second quarter, Spangler's defense making outstanding adjustments. We've got to remember they started the game with their top two players on defense, Alex Mash and Nick Davis, out of the starting lineup. They finally got in there here in the second period. And the Eagle defense has shut down Florida A&M here in the second quarter. You know, my first time to work with you, you must run 9 million miles up in the booth. You're, you're into this game, Phil. I like to see that. Speaking of into the game, look at these kids, huh? They having a good time? You know, the rain, the thunderstorm before the game, probably kept down the crowd some but boy we have a an outstanding turnout for this game between these two rivals Florida A&M and Georgia Southern this is the eighth meeting Georgia Southern has dominated winning six of the seven meetings in the last three and it's also without the students so it's a great crowd third down with a minute 12 remaining in the half Brown dumps it off to Chad fan got the first down but just barely fan Tripped up by Paul Carroll, the middle linebacker. And a timeout whistled by Florida A&M. They do get the first down. You kind of get a feeling that you're going to see that inside screen here. Look at the penetration on the outside, Williams and Mash. Now the backside comes, and you're, is they have that void with the linebackers dropping back in coverage. That's where you get the pass. Brown loads up. Has James Thurman at the 35. Let's see if they measure. Clock on the move, under 40 seconds in the first half. And the Rattler offense on the move. Keith Brown getting backside pressure. Ronald Johnson brings him down. Because Brown was scrambling, he moves forward for about a yard, but timeout called by Florida A&M. Ronald Johnson, you see the size of him, 5'11", 191, a senior. Hinesville, Georgia, and he was really chomping at the bit to get an opportunity to play in this game today. Johnson, a converted linebacker, 5'11", 191 pounds. Elsewhere in the southeast this afternoon, at Death Valley, Clemson Tigers jumped out to that early lead, but the Ball State Cardinals of the Mid-American Conference oh, well, right back in that in there, game. Huh? David Letterman School there, Sam. That's right. David Letterman School. <laughs> and Phil Van Horn. <laughs> Tim Stowers pacing the sidelines with 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Ken Riley and his quarterback, the junior Keith Brown, trying to take advantage of these last ticks of the clock. Riley, of course, was the 1988-1990 Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference Coach of the Year as they won their conference in those two years. He's a graduate of FAMU and, of course, a great 15-year career with Cincinnati and Green Bay, dating back from 1969. And again, two years of coaching the secondary for Forrest Craig up at uh, Green Bay before he went to FAMU. You know what I found interesting? He played for a legend in Jake Gaither oh, at yeah. FAMU. He also played for another one, Paul Brown. And when we talked to him yesterday, he was first and foremost talking about what he learned from the legend, Paul Brown, in terms of preparation and organization. Yes. And he said there's one thing that you can say with about our ball club is quite obvious to say we will be organized. And that's exactly what Brown wanted to be. He had one play called. Another play was called quickly by Coach Riley, and he wasn't certain, I'm sure, of one or the other. Look at the numbers on Brown already today. Two receivers split to the top. Brown for the bundle. Oh, a nice catch, beautiful catch by Terry Mickens, but he is out of bounds. On the coverage for Georgia Southern, Rob Stockton and Brandon Roselle. What a pretty catch. Well, you're talking about a jump ball, though, and Mickens is going to win that one. Stockton back there at 5'11". And, of course, on the other side, uh, Mickens at 6'2", and a tremendous leaper. And look how high he goes to get this ball. And as a matter of fact, Stockton didn't have a prayer in this one. You could also see Roselle is back there as well. Brown quickly from the one back set. Flushed out. Better hurry. May have been across the line of scrimmage. The intended receiver, yep, there's a flag. The intended receiver tied in Chad Fan.
pass the line of scrimmage is not going to be a real problem for they obviously are going to be in a fourth down or third down situation only five seconds remaining yep. in the first half so it's one play left anyway Ken Riley back in the old AFL wars recalled one receiver Otis Taylor of the Kansas City Chiefs mm -hmm. and says that Terry Mickens his fine split in reminds him of Otis Taylor good point you know, he also coached uh, with Green Bay, a kid by the name of Mike Flynn that came out of Notre Dame. Didn't have the foot speed, but knew how to play in the defensive secondary. Ken Riley made him the leader as the rookie in the National Football League with nine interceptions, so he does know how to coach the secondary. And that's the reason his own son, Kenny, stayed close to home. He was, he was recruited by Florida State right there in Tallahassee and many other schools, but elected to stay home. Big play here at the end of the half. Possibly the final play of the first half. Last five seconds. Keith Brown from the 39. Slips. That's incomplete. And the clock expires. Well, after a dynamic start by Florida AM, jumping out to a 14-7 lead, Georgia Southern now trailing 14-10 as we are at halftime. Let's go down to, ha to the sideline and Jim Noble. All right, thanks, Phil. I'm here with head coach Tim Stowers. Coach, you got the lift from Joe Dupree you were looking for. Is he your quarterback the rest of the way? We'll decide at halftime whether we should go with Charles or Joe Dupree in the second half. Uh, we'll get together this half and talk about it. But Joe did look good on that one play, but it was a busted play, and his athletic ability really showed up. Uh, we're not really playing well right now. I really think we're just kind of settling into the football game. And I think we're going to be a second-half football team right now. I don't think anybody's tired. And so I feel good about it right now at this point. Quickly, your, your young defense looked very young on that first series. They seem they to have did. settled down. And we talked about the inexperience in the secondary, and now they're starting to settle down. They played the half of football, and they're going to feel a little better feel better about it. I thought uh, as far as the run goes, we've been a little bit better against the run than I even anticipated. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Appreciate it. All joining. right, Phil, co head coach Tim Stowers down by four. The Eagles are at halftime. Well, we heard the coaches this week, Sam, talk about they uh, anticipated some drop off early in the game, but now the Eagles have their feet on the ground, down by four at halftime. It's an electrifying first quarter for Florida A&M, Georgia Southern here at halftime, trailing 14 to 10, Sam. I think the key to this football game is the fact that Georgia Southern showed a lot of confidence in themselves, made some adjustments. That's one thing that uh, FAMU coach Ken Riley said, they're the best at making adjustments. They did after FAMU scores, on two of their first three possessions, two of eight all told for the half. Georgia Southern only two of seven. They made some good adjustments. Only a couple of turnovers in the ball game, an intercept by FAMU, and of course a fumble recovery that was made by uh, the other side of the coin. So only two turnovers. I'm kind of surprised, particularly the way we started out in that drowning rain. And thanks for the umbrella today. We enjoyed it. <laughs> Emphasis on the two quarterbacks here in the first half. Keith Brown getting his first start as a junior for Florida A&M and acquitting himself nicely. He wasn't well, and I think the thing that, he, that he's done so well is that he's been able to adjust to what the adjustments made by, by uh, uh, Georgia Southern have been. The other side of the coin, it was, it was good to see the change of the guard, not so much to take Bostic out, but let Dupree come in, get his feet wet. I want to see Bostic come back into the third quarter at an appropriate time and let him reestablish himself. I think that's something they're talking about in the, in the locker room right now. Well, Charles Bostic struggling in the first quarter. Joe Dupree comes on in the second period. On three carries, or rather on four carries, picks up 78 yards, has that electrifying 44-yard touchdown scramble. And again, here at halftime, the score is 14 to 10. Be curious to see who starts when we come out in the second half. You know, there's a lot of people looking at this uh, Georgia Southern ball club because they're going to have to play them in the Southern Conference. And I'm telling you what, they're a tight ball club, and a lot of people are watching. And as we take a look at what they've got to face and the Southern Conference, it's one of the best that you'll find in Division AA. Performance of quarterback Keith Brown, a, a junior, Florida AM on top, Georgia Southern, 14 to 10. Here's we approach the end of intermission. Sam Smith joining Phil Van Horn here in Statesboro. Sam for the first half, little seesaw. First quarter belonged distinctively to Florida AM, but the second quarter, Georgia Southern rallied. Well, it's nice to see uh, Dr. Wagner has not lost his football knowledge by any stretch. He is perfectly correct in the fact that the Georgia Southern does have to get the offense going. As I pointed out earlier, FAMU has a tendency to give up yardage. So it's not the fact that Georgia Southern is not able to score on them. They will be, and that's where the seesaw is going to continue in the third quarter. So I think the adjustments that uh, Georgia Southern have made, they're talking about them in the FAMU dressing room right now, they'll make some of their own. All the looks, all the things they gave Georgia Southern, the Eagles rallied.
They came back, they adjusted to those, and they made a very, very good comeback, 14-10. Well, Keith Brown gets his first college start and makes a strong first impression as we take a look at the halftime highlights. Brown comes out and rifles a pass 59 yards. Tyrone Davis, they score and go up 7-0 on their very first possession of the game. And the key to the whole play is the fact the way Brown was able to scramble away from any pressure. You see how poised he is. He's kind of telling his receiver where he wants him to go. And, of course, Davis just breaks totally free from the secondary. Very inexperienced, and as Bucky pointed out, they had a lot to learn. And Coach Stowers says, hey, we grew up in a hurry after that first play. The but defense, I tell you what, Georgia Southern came back well. The defense is burned, but the offense comes back, and Joe Dupree doing it all by himself. Busted play. Look at the block coming right there once again. And again, it was Flaley that threw the big block to open up Dupree. And he does the rest. And Sorrells is down at the goal line, but not needed to block as Dupree gets his first TD. Joe Dupree bolting 44 yards. And here at halftime, it's Georgia Southern 10, Florida A&M 14. And Joe uh, Dupree, the statistical leader so far, just a couple of stats we'll talk about right here, because Joe Dupree, five carries, has sacked up 78 yards. The other quarterback, Keith Brown has had an outstanding first half as well, Sam. Well, he's run the ball well, and I think that's one of the things, but he has completed the pass, and it's almost like they said, hey, we're going to test that secondary. We're going to throw and throw. They may bend. We're going to wait for them to break, and they broke early, but now they're just bending. So he's thrown the ball so well. I think that has got to be the biggest surprise of the game for me. Well, we are at halftime here in Statesboro, expecting the players, Florida A&M and Georgia Southern, back out on the field in a few minutes. But let's take this time out at halftime. Georgia Southern trailing Florida A&M. 14 to 10. Cast day at Statesboro, Georgia in South Florida at Allen Paulson Stadium. The Eagles at home trailing at halftime 14 to 10, but coming from behind, actually down 14 to 3 early in the first quarter. Let's talk about stats here at halftime, Sam. Two teams, two offenses getting up and down the field, but Florida A&M doing it with the passing game and Georgia Southern doing it on the ground. Well, we thought that Duffy might be a real key. And as a matter of fact, even in the open, I, if it not, had not been raining and washed it out of my <laughs> head, I was going to say if Duffy rushes for 100 yards, it's going to be Florida A&M's ball game. He, of course, has had a, a very bad afternoon with the defense playing a big part of that, only 20 yards. But look at the passing, 187 yards already for Brown compared to only 11 so far for Georgia Southern. That is a, a real mismatch that I know that the Eagles would like to equalize. And again, our keys, as goes Duffy, so goes Florida A&M. That has not been the case. We can just kind of scratch out Duffy and put Brown in there because he's been the key. Or to adjust to the big storm we had, as floats <laughs> Duffy, <That's> uh, <laughs> as goes <laughs> the Florida A&M Another offense. Another couple of stats also. We mentioned only one turnover on both sides, and I think that's a key, particularly uh, a tribute to the field, the way it drains so well here. The footing has been good. The ball has been kept dry for the most part, only an interception and a fumble recovery. But the penalties have mounted up. And you may recall Georgia Southern shot themselves in the foot early. They got two uh, personal foul penalties that really helped in those drives. They were penalized three times for 36, five for 49 for Florida A&M. And those were costly penalties later on when Georgia Southern was trying to regain some momentum, I thought. Well, you know, those penalties, I think, kept Florida A&M from really pulling away even more so late in the, in the uh, first half. Let's go back to those keys to the game that we talked about in the pregame show. <clears throat> For Florida Southern, as goes Duffy. Well, here at halftime, Chuck Duffy, the versatile tailback, only 20 yards rushing on six attempts. Protect quarterback, have they? I, oh, I think for the most part they have. As, as a matter of fact, they protected him up in lanes, giving Brown an option to run outside. He sprinted out, or he's actually, he has not sprint drawed right up the middle that much, but he's been able to sprint out. Let me get back to Duffy one more time. When you look at pass receiving, he has not received a pass as of yet, and I thought that might be a weapon they'd use in the flat. So he has neither run the ball well with only 20, but he also hasn't become a pass receiver with the other ones doing so well, obviously. All right, Sam, let's take a look at Georgia Southern's keys to the game as we looked at him in the pregame show injuries the two defensive players they finally did get to see action in the second quarter and I think it was a key mash certainly coming in giving the outside pressure along with Anthony Williams I tell you he's been an unsung hero of this ball game the other defensive tackle and getting pressure from the outside they've got enough pressure on Brown later in the half not in the first part of the ball game and their young defensive backs we said they had to grow up they were certainly uh, babes in arms early on but I think they've grown and have adjusted a bit here they're against a very good receiving core for Florida A&M right now. Well, Terry Mickens, the feature receiver for Florida A&M, two-time All-League performer, two-time All-America, an outstanding uh, 
He's, he's talented, James Thurman, Jamie Bell as well. So they have three receivers along with the tight end, Chad Fenn. You know what I look for is more of that delay game, the sprint draw, dropping it off to the tight end, and some screen passes early in this third period to see if they can slow up that pass rush here early in the second half. I think they also, on the other side for Georgia Southern, they have got to go with some short, they have got to get more than 11 yards passing, only 106 yards rushing, to get themselves with a chance to win this ball game. So they too have to start looking for Willis. They have to start looking at Williams, or maybe even Lester, if he comes in out of the backfield. Fraley and Payne and some of those they can get on the outside. We have not taken a good look at a freshman by the name of Chris Joyner yet. He's a freshman that could really have a good night. Let's go down to Jim Noble down on the field. Are you dry down there, Jim? Hey, yeah, Sam. Actually, uh, ever since you guys left, the rain left, so everything's been great. Walked over to the Florida A&M side during halftime, and uh, those Rattler fans are having a good time. They love what their defense is doing. They really thought Georgia Southern was going to be more explosive. William Carroll, the whole Florida A&M defense, doing a great job. If they can keep everybody off Keith Brown, they say, hey, this game is ours. And uh, leading 14 to 10, you'd have to agree with them. Protection was a key. <laughs> and as we look at the second half and what happened late in the first half, protection again will be a factor. Let's talk quarterbacks as well, Sam. Here's Joe Dupree, who came on in the second quarter and was effective. He, as a matter of fact, is taking snaps from uh, Parrish, would give me the indication he will start the third quarter. But you saw Bostic throwing. so. Uh, Coach Stowers has indicated, hey, we know that it didn't go well for you early. We will get you in. Speaking of Coach Stowers, is of course, you see that uh, Georgia Southern will have the ball to start the third quarter. Coach Stowers pointed out, and he also said, you know, we're joining the Southern Conference, and we're very, very happy that we can athletically and academically. They are fourth overall in the conference in their grade point average. For example, in 91, 10 of their 22 seniors had a three-point grade average or better in the fall quarter. That's great. All 22 of those seniors on track to graduate, and nine of their 14 freshmen last year, a 2.5 or better grade point average. That's a great, great academic stat for Georgia Southern. Not only a great football team, but also they do well in the classroom. And it's a tribute to Tim that he puts emphasis and wanted to make sure and point that out to us. There's the junior quarterback, Keith Brown, warming up on the far sideline for the Rattlers. Weather changing a little bit here on the Sam as we just went through halftime. It's a little darker now, Noble, darker skies. Noble, Noble spoke too soon. That's what he did. <laughs> Said it was dry down there. And as we prepare for the second half kick, Georgia Southern trailing Ken Riley's Rattlers, 14 to 10. Back deep to receive for Georgia Southern, Chris Wright. Fleet slot back. It's Wright flanked by Henry Parrish and Steve Payne. Tim Cameron, the sophomore, will boot it off. Here's right on the run. Across the 20. Gets outside, has a block. The 40. Beats Cameron across the 50. Nice return, Chris Wright, up near the 45-yard line. About 55 yards on the return. Well, if you wanted to put a little sugar in your uh, drinking water at halftime and get yourself a lift, Certainly this would be the thing to do as Wright gets an opening. He gets some excellent blocking up field. Good wall was set up, and Wright really does a lot of this on his own. You see people trying to throw blocks but didn't want to throw illegal blocks, so they really kind of backed off and let him do his thing. Chris Wright was the co-MVP of the spring game. I thought he'd be a starter in the backfield this afternoon, but Wright uh, standing out there on special teams and injecting some spirit in this team. There's Joe Dupree opening up here in the second half. First down at the 46. Dupree by himself. Trying to find a path. Maybe a gain of four falling forward. You know, it's just Dupree taking the ball and trying to find something behind that offensive line. You know, Phil, we've been watching carefully at the end of the first half and now later in the ball game, the conditioning of these two ball clubs. One of the things Georgia Southern has always been able to do is out condition the other teams, it seems. There will be some occasions that they may not be the best conditioned team, but that will be the big factor for Florida A&M and Coach Riley here as this ball game wears on. Dupree runs out of options and he is smothered at the 47. Big hit by Salt Williams. Lewis Williams, they call him Salt, and he shows his stuff. Well, you can see they tried a little misdirection. Look how quickly that uh, Salt Williams was in there. Best physical athlete they have on this Florida a team, Lewis Williams. They actually have two, and they call Salt and Pepper from the same high school, <laughs> and this is Salt, and he played it very, very well. 
Third down, the draw, Dupree. Picks up four, but that's not nearly enough, and that'll bring up fourth down. Does Georgia Southern have a decision to make here? I don't, they'll put it away. Yeah, I, I think this early on. Uh, Dupree, you see, thought he had an opening in the middle. It was there for a moment, but again now, with a little bit fresh after the halftime, the down linemen, size and all, have such good reaction time. They're the people that uh, made the reaction and made the stop. Bill Thatcher, sixth attempt, first of the second half. Plenty of time. High. And here's Tyrone Davis going to let it hit at the 10 and dance out of bounds. Pretty punt by Bill Thatcher of Georgia Southern. Florida A&M will take over deep in its own territory. We are just underway in the second half. The Rattlers leading Georgia Southern 14 to 10. Keith Brown, the quarterback, two touchdown passes in the first quarter as they jump out to a 14 to 7 lead. It's interesting to watch the secondary almost four across back here for Georgia Southern until the Rattlers get to the line of scrimmage, but they're definitely in a deep drop zone right now. The linebackers have the responsibility underneath coverage. Chuck Duffy. Off tackle, not much. Ronald Johnson kind of stood up the tight end, Chad Fan, and held his ground there. No hole. What that's also telling me is that Ken Stowers and, of course, the people, uh, Tommy Spangler, have a great deal of confidence in their down linemen right now. They think they're controlling the line of scrimmage well enough to be able to drop the linebackers and the deep drop for the secondary, not having to come up and support on the run. As you said, Sam, the Georgia Southern defensive backs do not even join the huddle. They're back there ready for Keith Brown on second down and long. Getting pressure, fan, drop at the 20, shy of the 20. Nice hit by middle linebacker Paul Carroll. Let's see if that's enough for a first down. Let's check the spot. And it is a first down for Florida A&M. That time the linebackers overreacted to the pass and dropped too deep rather than holding their ground and playing a little bit of a center field. You see how Fan just ran to the open spot right in the middle, vacated by the linebackers. And Paul Carroll, who is not afraid to put a hit on you despite his neck problems, comes in and makes a stop, but too late. Jim Stowers, the head coach, says Paul Carroll plays middle linebacker the way it ought to be played. Hand off, Chuck Duffy. Stopped by Paul Carroll on cue. Gain of about three. Coach Ken Stowers had a comment. He said, if Carroll was bigger and he's 6'1", about 220 or 215. If he said he was bigger and lined up about 6'3 and about 255, we couldn't play him. He'd try to kill somebody <laughs> in practice. And you can see how hard he hits. And keep in mind, he's playing with a chronic neck problem that every time he gets a good solid hit, it sends like just stingers all the way down your back. And that is not only frightening, but very painful as well. Keith Brown to Duffy, his ninth carry. Not much there, Duffy. Fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage. The linebacker, Dexter Perkins, a junior in there on the stop. That brings up third down. Duffy, nine carries, only 27 yards. Have not utilized Duffy as well as we thought they might. I think the big key still is that their receivers were doing so well. well Tommy Spangler doing his job, the defensive coordinator, along with linebacker coach Eddie Garfinkel. Third down. Ron Johnson in pursuit. Oh, and nice down goes Keith Brown. That brings up fourth down, and FAMU will have to punt it away. This is an excellent pursuit play. You see the play action fake that freezes the linebackers. Johnson just lowers and lays back his ears. And look at this, a former linebacker, now a Don lineman, chasing down Brown from behind who is anything but slow. Well, there's your scrappy 190-pound defensive end whipping the big 295-pound tackle. Here's Wally Williams back to punt. The Eagles have gotten pressure today. Just missed that one. Brandon Roselle retreating at the 40. Gets a block. Another block at the 40. There's a flag. Still on his feet down to the 32-yard line. And you can see the Georgia Southern coaches jumping up and down when that flag was thrown. It lies near the 50-yard line. 
It's going to be an illegal block on number 28, Maurice Reed, a free safety out of Albany, blocking on the near sideline. But I tell you what, the special return team for Georgia Southern has come out to play in this half. The indication a block from behind, yep. not a clip necessarily. Above the waist and from behind. Actually, maybe below the waist, excuse me. Well, you're going Tallahassee in a game that was a seesaw game. Georgia Southern won 28-21. You can see Tim Stowers obviously unhappy about that call. And in the game a year ago, we saw a little bit of what we're seeing today. One team trying to pull away, but not able to do that. Here's the run by Roselle up the sideline. Now watch number 28 come into the picture. Comes in right in here. Right there, you see that he did not get the helmet in front. And it was a clearly a block above the waist, but it was from behind. And an illegal block rubs out a good run back here for Georgia Southern. All right, well, let's take a timeout. Early in the third quarter, Georgia Southern telling Florida A&M. And there's no mistake in it Hello, Joe. What do you know? Welcome back, everybody. The rain is starting to fall here at Paulson Stadium. Now, that's got the Georgia Southern coaches a little concerned because Joe Dupree has put the ball on the ground a couple of times. Wet conditions, they are not going to help Joe Dupree. Bill. All right, Jim Noble. Joe Dupree breaks the huddle at the 40-yard line. Down Eagles at the Southern 41. Dupree 0 for 3 passing so far. On eight carries, he's totaled up 82 yards and a touchdown. We're just underway in the second half. There's a flag. Dupree Keefe. Looking like he had the slot pack there. Shaft and Fraley. Possibly had some motion there by Georgia Southern. I was looking at the defense more at FAMU. They had eight men up on the line of scrimmage, so they're just daring Georgia Southern to throw the ball. As you mentioned, Dupree 0 for 3. They're just saying, okay, we're going to stop your run. You just got to throw the ball against us. So it's, the chess match is definitely back on. Sixth penalty of the afternoon against the White jerseys, on orange pants. On the white. Yeah, got a first down. Florida AM, six penalties for 55 yards. Check that 54 yards. Georgia Southern, four flags this afternoon, also for about 50 yards. Pretty much expected first game of the season. Dupree. As Darren Willis. Oh! Inside the 10. High school teammates, Joe Dupree hooks up with Darren Willis. First down and goal for Georgia Southern. Well, Georgia Southern took the dare. Florida A&M says, hey, you've got to throw it. They do, and here they come with a big bomb. You see the good protection. Watch as it almost breaks down on Dupree from the backside. And a good rush coming from behind by Williams. He gets this ball off just in time. And look as Willis just reaches and grabs it. That's a great run and pass for, for Georgia Southern. Two big plays this afternoon for the Georgia Southern offense, both supplied by Joe Dupree. First down and goal. As the pitch man keeps it, still on his feet. When Dupree watches the game films here, Phil, he's gonna notice he turned it up probably just a split second too quickly. Had he taken one more step down the line of scrimmage, and I know it's easy to watch up here. He has either a gaping hole or a wide pitch to the outside. And that's what films are all about when you watch them later on. It sure looked like he had the freshman Terry Lester out on the pitch. Here's second down and goal. Williams straight ahead, maybe to the five, driving the pile. Approaching the eight minute mark of the third quarter, Georgia Southern driving. Again, they want to keep it honest inside. They want Florida A&M to have to come with a pressure up the middle. That opens the option. It opens a sweep. It opens a little dump in passes. They are trying to keep FAMU inside the tackles with their rush and penetration. Georgia Southern trying to take the lead. The pitch, Fraley will throw it. Wide open, Willis, touchdown! Yes! Option, 
Shafton Fraley, a high school quarterback. We talked about this yesterday with Coach Stowers, and here it is, Sam. Well, he told us trick plays. He said, hey, I like the halfback option. I like reverse. Trick play number one of the afternoon. It's a TD for the Eagles. Reed Haley for the extra point. It's good, and Georgia Southern takes its first lead of the afternoon. Seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. The Georgia Southern fans on their feet in Statesboro. We'll be back with more of the second half right after this on Sports South. Accommodations provided by Days Inn Airport in Savannah, Georgia. Nominated Hotel of the Year with superior accommodations. Enjoy their restaurant, offering a selection of favorite dishes, Bailey's Floating Lounge, banquet facilities for up to 60 people, and outdoor heated pool with jacuzzi. You'll appreciate the extra touches to make this Days Inn so special. Days Inn Savannah Airport, a Merritt Dixon property. We are just underway in the second half in Statesboro, and the Eagles take their first lead of the afternoon. Back deep for Florida A&M. Knocked down at the 15-yard line, Jamie Bell. And a spirited Eagle deep kick return team is fired up. The scoring drive for Georgia Southern on four plays. They cover 59 yards. A big pass from Dupree to Willis sets it up. And then Shafton Fraley on the halfback option to Willis for the scoring toss. You know, so much has been said that there's a three parts of football. There's the special team, the offense, and the defense. I tell you, the team that's helping them get back in this ball game and get the lead is the special teams. Good returns, great kick coverage. They're doing their job here in the second half. Keith Brown sets up at the 17-yard line. Having trouble, and he goes down. Ronald Johnson and Anthony Williams, the left side of the Georgia Southern defensive line, getting pressure. Again, Georgia Southern stayed with their four down line with the linebackers dropping deep in the coverage. Brown had no one to throw to, despite the, the fact that Mickens had gone underneath inside the linebackers, but Brown at that time was having a run for his life, and guess what? Anthony Williams, the junior from Valdosta, has come to play today. Well, he's been the standout on defense, that's for sure. We have a change of quarterbacks here in the second half. That's Keith Brown standing on the sideline, and another junior, Tracy Weldon from Plant City, Florida, is in there, and there's a whistle on his first snap. Well, Sam, the coaches of FAMU said they would make a change. The key word, rattled. When it appeared, Keith Brown looked rattled. Well, let's go down to the sideline. Jim Noble are working the sidelines today for us. Jim? Bill just spoke to Darren Willis, who caught that trick halfback pass from Shafter Fairley. He says they only practiced it once all week, and it worked. So Tim Stowers must have figured, hey, if it worked once, we don't need to try it again. Let's go back upstairs. Nothing, nothing like perfection, huh, Phil? <laughs> if one is all it takes, why worry? Here's second down and the first snap for Tracy Weldon. 6'2", 175 pounds. Sets up the tight end screen. Corey Mosley fighting for first down yardage. Spinning off the initial hit. Can you imagine Mosley, a former quarterback? He's 6'4", weighs 238 pounds. What a target. Look at the deep drop by Weldon. I mean, he dropped back almost out of the county with that one. And a good catch and run by Mosley. But it appeared that Scott Davis, the linebacker, had that play defense. Nope. He just bounced off Mosley. That's all there was to it. But that's what's going to bring those linebackers a little further up and will open the down the field passes here if FAMU elects to go back deep as they had good success with early. Third down. Looking for the inside handoff. Nope. Crossing pattern. Terry Mickens hit across the 30. And that should be a first down for Florida A&M. Again, this is just good old fashioned football. You just run where they're not. And again, with a good penetration by the lineman, the deep drop by the linebackers, and the way the secondary is playing back, it is Meekins just slipping underneath. And you see how many of the Eagles come to the aid and abetting of one of their teammates to bring Mickens down. But they get another first down and they do it the easy way, it seems. Sam, you know, I think that was a busted play because uh, they had the one receiver coming across, and then in, in the huddle, before the huddle, Weldon was talking with Chuck Duffy about what might have happened. And here is Duffy on the handoff. 
knocked out of bounds. Meets Brandon Roselle head on at the 38 yard line. Uh, did you see them out there? I mean, before that huddle, three of the FAMU players, <laughs> that time they benefited from a busted play, but they were out there with Weldon talking to him that maybe it should have gone another way. Also, there becomes a concern that at halftime, Weldon may have been huddling with the quarterback coaches and not heard something that Coach Riley had told him as an overall team. So quite obviously, as the water continues to get a little peppering here at uh, Statesboro and it continues to come down, they wanted to know exactly, he and Duffy, the quarterback Weldon, what was going on a moment ago. Play clock down to five, to four. You can see Ken Riley have, wanting him to speed it up. Nice pass, Mickens at midfield, dropped by Ronald Johnson are checked that by Dominic Turner and another first down for Florida A&M. And this is the FAMU offense that we first uh, worried about. By the way, did you bring your two iron? They got a ball laying out here, boy. Again, Weldon, very deep drop, which gives his lineman a little bit more room to work unless they get underneath. And of course, that's right at midfield where it is very slippery. But again, now becomes the adjustment time, Phil. Georgia Southern has to do something with the linebackers. You see them up a little tighter in the line of scrimmage. They aren't going to give as much ground as they've been giving here now. First down for the backup, Tracy Weldon across midfield. Straight ahead, Chuck Duffy, and he is met head on at the line of scrimmage. What an impact. Huey Hunt, the middle linebacker. You could hear the pads pop. Boy, you have a feeling they read a key or something because Hunt was right in exactly the right place. They had picked up a key the way they came out and a tendency by FAMU after a big pass play. Did they come back with a certain running play? And indeed they did. And Georgia Southern adjustment, and they did exactly what they needed to do. What's the underneath pass here again right now? Weldon has a pair of receivers split to the top of the screen. Looks for his tight end, almost intercepted. Don Hudson had his hands on it. He was thinking tight end also. Yeah, that was the first one he wanted right there, too. You see again, Weldon, he gets away from the center about as quick as you can get back there. Now he has mobility to roll out, a little wobbly pass, and it was fortunate for him it was thrown a little low because Hudson had that one and was heading the other way, maybe. Weldon perhaps telegraphing that pass just a bit. And as the rain from a, just a drizzle becomes a steady rain now in Statesboro. Third down and 10 near midfield for Florida A&M. Weldon over the middle on a hop incomplete. And the Georgia Southern fans sensing the stop here at midfield, but it looked like FAMU was moving the ball. Chad Fan, the big tight end, the man for whom that ball was intended. Let's go down to the sideline. Here's Jim Noble. Thanks, Phil. Just over at the Florida A&M sideline, you're right about one thing. They did take Keith Brown out, no injury or anything. They just took him out. They think he's a little rattled. That was Georgia Southern's big goal, to get Keith Brown out of the ball game, and it's worked. It's Wally Williams, not much pressure. Brandon Roselle, let it drop. Picks it at the 10, Ooh. loses some ground, and there is a flag down right at contact. Brandon Rosell tackled at the Difficult decision by Brandon Rosell receiving the punt. Let's see what that flag is about. Rosell was in that no man's land. Anytime the ball's hopping around the 10th. North Carolina leads Wake 35-17 in the fourth quarter, one of the other scores this afternoon. And let's take a look at this one. How about Ohio State? just leading Louisville by four. Cardinals playing well there right now. They're in Columbus. Cardinals, Jeff Brom finally getting back at the quarterback after missing most of last year with an injury. Let's take a look at the infraction. Again, Roselle nonetheless trying to feel the ball on the loose at the 10. And right there, hmm, that's Henry Parrish makes the hit. Didn't quite get his head in front. That, that could have been close. So they retreat half the distance to the goal line. And under a steady rain, here's Joe Dupree near his own goal line. Straight ahead in the power eye. That's the freshman, Terry Lester. Coach Tim Stowers has high hopes for this 5'11", 197-pounder. There's David Saunders sending in the play 
On the right side of the screen, Mike Hodge is the offensive coordinator. You know, Hodges thought that Lester could very easily be one of the best backs ever to come out of Georgia Southern once he gets some play time. That's a big boast. No gain on the play, second down and 10. Dupree on the draw. That hole is open, but closes quickly. He maybe picks up two. That'll bring up third down. And a tough call for the Eagles. One thing Dupree has to keep in mind is that he can't do anything really spectacular here. And again, as he gets just strong-armed on the inside, 79, Marcus Lampkin, their strongest player, almost arm tackling right to the ground. And Kim Stowers, he knows his ball club's in a little trouble right now, but they've got a lead, and that's the key. Eagles up by a field goal, 17-14. Approaching the two-minute mark of the third quarter. Pressure from behind. Dupree escapes. Let's fly high and out of bounds. That brings up fourth down. Good defensive series by Florida A&M. You know, the stage is set now, and again, I by no means interpret this as trying to second-guess Coach Stowers. Dupree was under a tough situation. He had to be careful with the ball, but now the stage is set. If you're going to bring back Bostick, the timing might be very good on the next series of downs. Bill Thatcher, the punter from his own end zone. Tremaine Bridges standing at midfield to receive this punt. Not much of a rush. High. Beauty. Nice hang time. Bridges back to the 41. It's a block. Still dancing across midfield and up to the 46-yard line. Well, let's take this time out. Georgia Southern gets the ball out of its own end. The Eagles on top by three in the third period. Florida A&M quarterback Keith Brown back in the lineup after taking a break. A&M jumped out to a 14-3 lead, but now the Eagles have have jumped on top. Tracy Weldon, the backup, with the helmet off, out for a series. Now he takes a break, and Keith Brown, the original starter, back in the lineup, Sam. Well, it'll be interesting to see what Brown was able to get from his rest, so to speak, what kind of instructions they gave him. He was a little rattled. There was no doubt about that. Now they want to bring him on, let him just kind of get back to the basics, even though they said that early and they came out throwing. Get back to the bases and just try to see what they can do about reestablishing something for the Rattlers is protection is being sought. Where, where's our man Nobles? He's got, oh, he's got a big umbrella down here. <laughs> First down for Florida A&M with a minute 49 remaining in the third quarter. There's Chuck Whoa. Duffy. Big hole, straight ahead. Stiff tackle, good technique. Don Hudson dig down deep, but not before Duffy could pick up eight. That's basic 101, just hand the ball to Duffy. Keep it simple, establish inside. You see how it's just a little delay, a little misdirection as well, and Duffy does the rest. As the hole has been opened up to the left side, there was also one developing on the right, but it was not there in time, and he spotted the opening and got right into it. Florida A&M putting on a clinic with Duffy and the sprint draw in the middle of this ball game. Number one, Miami, by the way, is looking on film later on of Florida A&M. They will play them down in the Orange Bowl on Sunshine on September the 19th. Fake to Duffy. Brown has time. Mickens caught. Squirting through up inside the 20 yard line. Terry Mickens, a dangerous receiver for the Rattlers. Again, they set it up with a basic play up the middle. Brown realizing again he got the one play he needed to kind of gain his confidence. Protection is there. Throws it, and this is a nice, nice pickup catch there by Mickens. And then, of course, the secondary having to retreat and then come up to get him. And a young man from Tallahassee, Florida, gets another good reception here. Well, after Georgia Southern takes its first lead of the game, the Rattlers back threatening once again. It's 17-14, Georgia Southern on top. Quick look, Mickens. Still on his feet, still on his feet inside the five. He sheds two Mickens tacklers. Terry Mickens, tremendous individual effort. Nobody more disappointed in this one than Anthony Williams. Watch number 75 out here. He gets an angle and a shot, and of course the first miss is made there by Stockton. But there's Williams, had a hand on him and couldn't finish him off. And finally they do get him down, but that's another nice play by Mickens. Outstanding leg strength and leg drive by Terry Mickens, the junior from 
Leon High School in Tallahassee, Florida. And he'll come out of the lineup. Mickens, eight receptions for 132 yards. You can see the concern of Coach Ken Riley. On first and goal, Duffy diving straight ahead, down to maybe the two. Duffy, the ball carrier. They're going right at Anthony Williams and Ronald Johnson. There you hear the horn. End of the third quarter. Georgia Southern clinging to a 17-14 lead. When we come back, Florida A&M knocking on the door. Step of the natural-looking gradual step-by-step -step system. Whether you're a high-profile executive or a rugged sports enthusiast, HRS will make you look younger and feel more confident when you begin gradual hair replacement. And no one will notice. Take the first step. We've never made this offer before, and it's for a limited time. Remember, only $950 for the first step of our new gradual hair replacement. Do it now. Now's the time to get started with the new gradual HRS of Atlanta step-by-step -step system. This special offer ends soon. Operators are standing by. For more information, call HRS at 1-800-453-9600. That's 1-800-453-9600. A potent running attack. And a strong defensive secondary leads Virginia Tech against reigning Peach Bowl champion East Carolina. Live next Saturday on Sports Up. It's back under the lights this week in Richmond, Virginia for both the Winston Cup and the Bush Grand National Series. We'll be there and we'll talk racing together Thursday night. Live Thursday night at 11 on Sports Up. Welcome back to Folsom Stadium where the Georgia Southern Eagles are leading the Florida A&M Rattlers 17 to 14 entering the fourth quarter. And that's a good omen for Georgia Southern fans because the Eagles have never lost a home game when they were leading going into the fourth. Their overall record at Folsom Stadium, of course, Phil and Sam, 55 and three. Only lost three and in season openers since the rebirth of football here at Georgia Southern. The Eagles have won seven, lost three. The FAMU has won its last four season openers. And the Rattlers trying to take the lead right here on second down out of the power eye. Duffy stood up at the goal line. Did he get in? You can see Keith Brown motion for the touchdown. But it appears that the blue shirts have made a goal line stand. Well, they just stacked them in there. Look at the penetration across the line of scrimmage of the blue shirts. Duffy fought that penetration. Look as he got right at the yellow stripe, but never crossed it. And they really stacked it up well. But again, the initial penetration across the line of scrimmage by the Eagles. Again, the power eye on third down and inches. Brown by himself behind Williams. Touchdown, Florida A&M. Keith Brown only needed less than a yard. So he just tucked in behind that 300-pound center, Wally Williams. Well, he's got not only the 300-pound center, but on either side of him, he's got 295 and 285. So just keep it yourself. Just a slight delay. Let Williams make the contact, ride him one way or the other, and takes it in for the score. And now the seesaw battle in the fourth quarter is definitely on. Tim Cameron. There's a flag. Nails the extra point. Look like offsides on Georgia Southern. They had someone trying to get back onto the football field. They only had 10. They had procedure on Florida a and Offsetting Five. penalties. We'll have to tell Mr. Askew that we, uh, we spent some money to put that mic on him. <laughs> <laughs> He looks good wearing it, <laughs> but he hasn't necessarily used it for its full purpose today. <laughs> you know, the referees have done a good job. They've been a lot of penalties, but they've done a good job because we've seen some tempers flare a little here, and they've, they've kept the ball game right, right in hand, and this will be a key, critical part of the game for them, I think. Sophomore Tim Cameron once again. This one looks even better than the first attempt. And Florida A&M. Seesaw's back in front, 21 to 17. Under gray skies and now a steady rain. We're early in the fourth period. 
That drive covering 46 yards, six plays, and now FAMU leading the Georgia Southern Eagles. Keith Brown coming in after resting for a series, Sam, and moving the team down and cashing it in. Well, it was it was a very tactical, uh, hi, Mom, and Sports South. How you doing? <laughs> I was going to say, we're, oh, he's got to flip it over. It says send money, I'm sure, right? <laughs> no, the guy next to him says, would you turn it over? Boy, the freshman, would you turn it over? <laughs> the freshmen really you look young here at Georgia Southern. They do. <laughs> back to the back, Brown coming in. Good strategic, uh, strategic play there by Ken Riley. He came in, he brought Weldon in, let him play the series that he felt he was comfortable with. Brown came over, had a good discussion. Louisville's back in and does the job. Back deep is Chris Wright. Had an outstanding oh. return. That hops by him, retreating back to the three. Gets a block from Parrish. Cuts at the 20. Chris Wright at the 30. Up to the 35-yard line. Nice recovery after a, a near huge mistake by Chris Wright. How many times have you seen a play made out of a busted play? This is a perfect example. Again, a good kick here by FAMU. They put the ball on the ground. It's wet. It's moist. Right lets it bounce by him. He retreats. Look, as he's already way back at about a two-yard line. The blocks are ahead of him there. Makes a good cut, comes to the outside. But again, what should have been a big play for FAMU turns in for a big one for the Eagles. Sam, he was lucky. That ball hopped up uh, when yes. he was retreating to get it. Joe Dupree, the pitch. Parrish at the 40. Lunging forward near first down territory. Sam Stockton, the linebacker, makes a hit, but not before Henry Parrish gains about nine, maybe ten. Well, the young man from Brunswick wastes his little time and kind of putting a punctuation mark on his first carry of the day. And there's the option at its best. Actually, almost just a, a quick pitch more than the option down the line of scrimmage, but he does what he has to do. And let me certainly tell you that Dupree and of course Coach Stowers is really making the call here to let Dupree come back in. <laughs> Sloppy goal, huh? Dupree, before things develop, dropped for a loss of three. You know, Sam, this afternoon we have not heard much from William Carroll, number 27, the All-America safety. Dupree and Georgia Southern keeping the ball on the ground. But here's number 27. Let's read it from his position. He's reading, watching to see if anybody's coming down. And the reason we haven't heard from him is the fact that Georgia Southern has not been able to throw the ball long. If anything, they've thrown double off passes and under the zone coverage. They haven't been able to hit the long one with the exception of the long one to Willis earlier. Dupree getting pressure. Not much there. Maybe now's the time to start thinking about Charles Bostic again, or maybe not. Joe Dupree getting stacked up by the pass rush of Florida A&M. Dupree this time gets out of a jam. I mean, a real Hornets jam. But look at his two blockers ahead of him. They really don't know which way to block. And that's in a case where the quarterback really, it's almost like a center fielder calling for the ball with the right fielder and the, maybe the shortstop coming over to the second baseman. You got to call them off. You got to say right, right, left, left when you got blockers like that. And of course, Dupree running for his life couldn't say either. Bill Thatcher from his 30. Fumble, no, nope, picks it back up. Again, a busted play up near the 30-yard line. Tremaine Bridges. You can see he gets a big pat on the back from Keno Taylor. And as we can see the rain, or occasionally see the rain, creating some slippery conditions. Big key for Georgia Southern right now with 12 minutes to go is, of course, to play defense. Jim Nobles has something down. Jim? Yeah, uh, Sam, the Georgia Southern coaches are telling their players, whenever you make a tackle, try to, stiff the, try to strip the football. It is very wet down here. As you see, the football is very slippery. They're going to try to force a turnover on this series. On first down, Keith Brown, the starting quarterback, still in there. Gives it to his fullback, not much, Mike Mitchell. Clock on the move, under 12 minutes remaining in the game. A final score in the ACC, North Carolina. Mac Brown says this might be his best team. They open up with a win over Wake Forest, 35 to 17. How about the win by North Carolina State over Iowa last week? Was that a big win or what? Big win for that school and the conference.
Brown drops it off, his fullback, big hit. Rob Stockton comes up to support. That pass is incomplete. It was right on the hands of Mike Mitchell. Boy, Brown has been very, very close to getting to that line of scrimmage. You may recall he had one earlier right at the line of scrimmage, and the ball is tipped right at the line of scrimmage, and a nice job as they continue to bat the ball away, and it gets just out of the reach of the receiver there. Super effort by Ronald Johnson. Did you see big Tim Green, number 71, 315 pounds of pulling guard out there in front of Pete Brown? Third down and eight. Quick look. Oh. A step behind Terry Mickens. That'll bring up fourth down. I tell you what, it, it takes a couple of buses to bring these guys in here, and that's that's the back three seats right there, folks. They have some big, big athletes at Florida A&M. They have some, as a matter of fact, we were talking about Wally Williams, the center. He's got 4'8 speed, though, so we're not talking about guys that carry 300 pounds and can't move. A lot of these guys can't, speaking of Williams. Good speed, good leg strength. Eighth punt of the afternoon. Oh, Brandon Roselle, a booming punt back to the 20. There's the reverse, Terrence Sorrell. He has blockers across the 40. And out of bounds at midfield. Nice call by the Georgia Southern Special Teams Unit. Terrence Sorrell up midfield. Georgia Southern will have the ball in good field position. The Eagles trailing by four. You know, you know I had the, not the pleasure by any means, to go through Hurricane Andrew down in Homestead. I lived through that and saw the devastation. These people need a lot of help, not only now, but continuing. And a, a relief fund has been set up, 1-800-354-3571. Call that number. Do what you can to help because it's going to be an ongoing process to recover. It is devastated in South Florida, and those people really need your help, and we thank all of those people. You were in Homestead in a house. Yes. During landfall. Eye of the hurricane went right over the top, and it was, I have to tell you, one of the scariest moments of my life. Well, here's Joe Dupree on first down at midfield. Looking for Sorrell, nope, dumps it under, almost picked off. The middle linebacker, Ian Connor, had his hands on it. Shafton Fraley was the intended receiver here. Dupree, you see, has pretty good time to throw. And he throws, as a matter of fact, to the wrong man. Fraley was pretty well covered, but the man cutting across the middle was Payne, and of course, Sorrell had also broken deep and possibly could have been open. Sorrell cleared out that zone, but boy, he had a step. James Williams straight ahead, tumbling forward, a gain of four. The stop by Bruce Daniels, the middle linebacker from Valdosta. Clock on the move at 10 and a half minutes remaining in the game. Georgia Southern down 21 to 17. It's getting to be muddy out on the field and off the field. They're having fun, aren't they? You know, <laughs> taking a look at that mud, you know, they had to practice here at Georgia Southern on this field because their other practice fields were totally underwater last couple of weeks, and it stood up very, very well. Watch for maybe a little trickster here. Third down. Dupree has Sorrell off target. He was there, and that'll bring up fourth down. That was a natural direction for the quarterback Dupree to roll and throw, but again, throws too far for Sorrell and just under Willis, who had been a good receiver throughout the afternoon. If the practice fields are underwater as they were this week, that means that the beautiful Eagle Creek is flowing. Well, they got plenty to put in those bottles and take on the road now. Joe Dupree, one for seven passing this afternoon. And here's Bill Thatcher on fourth down. Thatcher at about his 40. Bridges back inside the 10. Oh, that hits Florida a oh, yeah, Yes, yes. Henry Parrish can pick it up, and he does. At the two-yard line, what a break. Georgia Southern's ball. Henry Parrish. Let's takes take advantage of a huge break. Yeah, let's take a look at this now, Phil. Watch the ball. The receiver comes up to look and see if he's going to feel it. One of his blockers interferes with it, and it goes off the back of number 39, who cannot come up for the ball, and Honeycutt. And now let's see what they finally call down here. But you can hear the boos ringing out from Paulson Stadium. Can they blow the ball dead? 
for Florida A&M. It did not look like Bridges, you can see Tim Stowers upset, it did not look like Bridges came near it or that he was calling for a fair catch. But let's take a break and try to sort this out. That could be a pivotal play in this game. In the fourth period, Georgia Southern trailing by Florida A&M on top 21-17. Pivotal play right here. Tremaine Bridges, number nine, back. But, but who does this ball hit? The FAMU player, Honeycutt, the blocker, or Georgia Southern's player? Almost difficult to tell there, Sam. Let's take another angle. Let's another look to see if we can see. Now watch this Honeycutt for Florida A&M is on the outside. Bridges dives through. And a ball again is struck, and it still appears to have struck Honeycutt, and then falls to the turf, recovered inside the five by Georgia Southern, but that's still the discussion. Ken Stowers, the Eagles coach, talking to referee Jimmy Askew. What Tim was saying during the timeout, he kept saying, the ball hit them over and over again, as if the officials are saying, no, that ball hit Georgia Southern and should have been dead. Tim Stowers making his point. That is a huge play in this ball game. To the naked eye, Sam, do you agree? It appeared to hit FAMU, and Georgia Southern recovers. They're in business inside the five. That's from, what it looked like on the original play. From the two angles, and as a matter of fact, the Georgia Southern player was blocked away from the ball by FAMU, and I thought it did indeed go off of Honeycutt and recovered by the Eagles inside the five-yard line. We could see that things did not work out to Tim Stowers' satisfaction. And the fans here in Statesboro voicing their displeasure. This afternoon, fourth period at the Big Horseshoe in Columbus, Ohio State, leading Howard Schnellenberger's Cardinals 17-13. Elsewhere, Alabama and the SEC on top Bambi. That's in the fourth. And here, 9-54 remaining in the game. That could have been huge for Georgia Southern. We have one more look. Mike Rubin, our producer and Dan Shoemaker, our director, and there you can see it right in the middle of all of that mess. And a ball appears still to go off a honeycut, I believe, of Florida A&M, and goes to the turf recovered by Georgia Southern. Again, no replays for the referees, though. For our best look, it sure looks like it goes off the right shoulder pad of Honeycutt, the Florida A&M blocker. But instead of Georgia Southern taking over, it's FAMU. Ball spotted at the 12, first down and 10. Chuck Duffy gets outside, cuts up field, up near the 30-yard line, big play, and Florida A&M out of trouble right away. Not what Georgia Southern needed at this stage of the game, and it'll be interesting to see how long Alex Mash stays out of there, but look at the good over the line of scrimmage blocking here by Florida A&M. They won the line of scrimmage. Duffy does the rest, getting around Hudson, who has some great feet, and is finally caught from behind. That's the Duffy that Georgia Southern most feared coming to this game. Well, Keith Brown, the quarterback, wants a timeout. Outstanding cut by Duffy on the wet track. Well, let's take a timeout. Nine and a half minutes remaining in the ball game. Georgia Southern, 17. Florida A&M, 21. We'll be back with more from Statesboro here on Sports South. Let's take this break. fourth quarter at Statesboro, Georgia Southern trailing Florida A&M. You can see the towel on the ball during the timeout. A&M on top, trying to put this one away with a fourth quarter drive. Quick look, Terry Mickens brought down shy of the first down, but a huge gain of seven. Let's see if Florida A&M continues to put the ball up in the air, Sam, because right now Chuck Duffy has 42 yards in the second half, and he has been effective. I think they're just coming out with their playbook, and they said, okay, let's go back and look at some of the plays that have worked. This certainly has been one that has worked all day with Pickens and uh, Meekin, excuse me, and that's where they really feel like they have a good opportunity to, to get some more. And look at Georgia Southern. They've rushed well, holding Florida A&M down, particularly Duffy, but the passing game has been the real key here for, for FAMU. Second and short, Duffy. 
stacked up. Still driving. Let's see where they mark forward progress. Accommodations provided by Days Inn Airport in Savannah, Georgia. Nominated Hotel of the Year with superior accommodations. Enjoy the restaurant, offering a selection of favorite dishes. Bailey's Floating Lounge, banquet facilities for up to 60 people, and outdoor heated pool with jacuzzi. You'll appreciate the extra touches that make this Days Inn so special. Days Inn Savannah Airport, a Merritt Dixon property. You can see Cliff Lewis, the defensive line coach, First down for Florida A&M. Again, they go to Chuck Duffy, and again he has a hole on the right side. Ronald Johnson, the defensive end, collapses in the middle and makes the stop. By the way, if you're wondering, Alex Madge is on the sideline. He did play earlier, and it played so well at the end of that second half, but now it's Duffy just finding some holes behind that huge front line of his, averaging 278 pounds and gets a good sizable game there. There's Mash on the sideline waiting for another chance. Big number 99. Five defensive backs in for Georgia Southern on second down and about five. Quick look, Pickens, oh, nice. and he is cut right away. About as well as you can play that little look-in pass. Pickens pleading his case there, but coming up and laying it on, Roselle was right there. Brandon said, no, you don't. <laughs> that brings up third down and four. You can see Marco Bradham, number 19, left side of your screen, urging this crowd on. Seven minutes remaining. They may try something deep here, Phil. Getting pressure. Darius Dawson, it's loose. Recovered by Georgia Southern. They recover along to the Eagles. Darius Dawson makes the big play. FAMU was definitely setting up to send something down the field. But watch the good pursuit. Coming right straight up the middle and Brown has no place to run as Dawson chases him down. Ball is loose and a big break for the Eagles here. Ronald Johnson, tremendous agility. Johnson again, there's, there's Dawson, that's the key hit. And a good pursuit coming right on top of it is Ronald Johnson. There's Dawson, and there is Johnson. Dawson and Johnson, sound like a law firm here. <laughs> Look out for the reverse, Darren Willis. That smelled out pretty well. Good defense by Florida A&M. Good penetration, Irwin Collier, big number 93, tremendous pen penetration. Uh, trying to get him pumped up here. Here once again is trick play number two. The first one you may recall was a halfback option pass and went for a touchdown. Willis very instrumental in that one, but not so in the reverse here. Under six and a half minutes remaining. Williams breaks free. Up near the 30 yard line and up near the original line of scrimmage after the big loss. You know, you got to feel a couple of plays. Fraley along with Payne, and certainly Willis, again, have to be figured in. And Sorrell, he's been very quiet today. you got to look at those guys to get a big play here. Third down and 11. Joe Dupree. Not nearly enough. Demetrius Boney makes the big play. And uh, it is... Dupree made a quick decision on what he was going to do, but it never really materialized for him. And it closed down in a big hurry. Boney not only made the big stick, he fought off a blocker to get to Dupree. Bruce Daniel, their middle linebacker, one of their leaders, really taunting the crowd after that stop. Big play. Fourth down and 10. Fourth down and 11. Dupree has time. And a receiver, Willis. Incomplete, that may have scooted along the turf. That would have been enough for a first down. Oh, big play for Florida A&M. Willis was open. He was indeed, and now the defense that had rested just momentarily is called on again. This time, Dupree is a little hesitant to where he's gonna throw the ball. You see him looking back to his left. Now he looks at his second receiver and comes back to Willis, and he never really gets a good grip on the ball. It is damp and never gets it to Willis. 
look at it as just with that nose down, just dives right in front of him. Five minutes remaining in the game. That's your opportunity if you're Georgia Southern right there, a golden opportunity. Florida A&M goes right back to tailback, Chuck Duffy. Marco Bradham, the stick. Duffy had some territory, but then loses ground back inside the 30, a loss of two. That's sort of good running back, uh, and he will, obviously he's a senior, and the pros are looking at him, but a good running back, when he knows that he's got a little room on the outside, he thinks he's got enough athletic ability to create more. If he cuts back to the right right there, you can see the pursuit's going one way. With his great feet, he can just kind of take them off balance, but he ran right into the string and ran right into Branham. Nice job. Marco Bradham, a one-man wrecking crew in high school, played defensive back, quarterback, kicker, and punter. And Chuck Duffy up near 70 yards this afternoon. Look back over the middle, almost picked off. Huey Hunt, the middle linebacker, got a hand on it. Boy, Florida A&M giving opportunities to the Georgia Southern Eagles. You know, you mentioned Huey Hunt here a couple of times. Huey's come in and played very well at that middle linebacker spot. And indeed, he did have his name in the newspaper and all over Sports South and Sunshine with an intercept here today. But another one that just got away. Great play by him to knock that one away from Mosley, though. Mosley made a good play to try to come back and catch it. Third down and 11. Clock at 419 in the game. Inside screen to Mickens, uh -oh. shakes free, breaks free up across midfield and dragged down by Marco Bradham. Ken Riley's offense, perhaps the biggest play of the game right here and it comes off a broken tackle. Well it does and right in the middle of that play, you see the block from behind and again they're just going to their strings. Mickens in the open field, letting him do what he can. And as uh, Bradham takes him down hard at midfield, Ken Stiers, you can see uh, a little, little more concern than we saw earlier with 3.51 to go now. Still thinking back to that ball that went off of Florida A&M as far as he was concerned. Keith Brown turns around once timeout with 3.41 remaining in the game and FAMU trying to build on a 21 to 17 lead. We'll see the result. Brown will talk to his coach, Ken Riley. We'll be back in rainy Statesboro. Welcome back. 341 left in the fourth quarter. Florida A&M leading Georgia Southern 21-17, a sight you usually don't see in Paulson Stadium. Fans heading for the exits. They must have thought that when the Rattlers converted that third and 11, it's about doomsday for Georgia Southern. Let's go back upstairs. Well, 341 remaining, 12,700 fans turning out this afternoon. We had a thunderstorm before the game, steady rain throughout the second half. Here's Florida A&M trying to put this game away. The pitch, nice hit, Chuck Duffy driven out of bounds for no gain. Marco Bradham ushers him out of bounds. Well, a high school running back, Bradham, I tell you what, this young man from Savannah High School, Offensive Player of the Year over there, just a freshman redshirt. He's playing the corner about as well as you can play it against a very good running back. Look how he just strings it out, strings it out. Good running back at 203 pound, 5'11", Chuck Duffy. Keith Brown doing an outstanding job of making a one-two punch work on his college debut. Brown going in the air to Terry Mickens for a single season record, or rather a single game record. Mickens, 13 catches, 168 yards, and that is a FAMU record for a single game. And they're gonna look for him right here too. Duffy looking for him, batted up in the air. Sean Austin making the play and batting the ball down. Looks like James Thurman, the intended receiver. Good pressure here. This is the little trick play at Florida A&M and trying to pull out it again. You can see jump ball and a great play in there once again as Sean Austin comes in. The Young man, 5'9", a junior, 2 year let him out of Thomasville. And Ken Riley on the sideline saying, you know, I've got, let's see, I've got Florida, Miami coming up in two weeks, and I'm trying to get out of here alive. And so far, he's got a lead. After a 6-5 and five season a year ago, yeah. what a season opening victory would be this afternoon in Statesboro. Looks like Williams made contact across the line of scrimmage on third down. 
On a third and 11, even more importantly than that. Yep. He's played a little high school basketball. You've got to raise your hand when they call a foul on you. Chuck Duffy this afternoon, 19 carries, 66 yards. And with third and about five, Let's see if they go to Duffy or to Mickens. That's ju been just about it as they try to put yeah. this game away here in the fourth period. You might also keep in mind, Chad Fan has been kind of quiet here. They're tied in underneath. Three and a half minutes remaining. Inside screen, ball knocked loose. Is it a fumble? It is recovered by Georgia Southern. Let's see. If it's a catch, it's a fumble. If it's not a catch, it's just an incompleted pass, and the officials say no. On the reception, oh, that was close. James Thurman took some kind of punishment on that inside, that middle screen. Bill, let's take a look and see if he did clearly have possession of the ball. He's got it there, but as he brings it to his waist, the ball is free. Now, did he have it long enough to bring on possession? The official said no, incompleted pass. Ronald Johnson again, he's where the ball is. And Volley Williams on fourth down and five, standing back at his own 45 to punt this ball. Brandon Roselle at the 10. Williams goes down and there's the flag, roughing the kicker. Roselle retreats, nice move. Up across the 20. What did you think, Sam? A little bit of acting on Wally Williams' part? I'd have to kind of see the replay because I was kind of watching the ball go up the field and didn't see that much contact. But we'll take a good look at it here on the replay. But again, Williams, Again, after he gets it away, if the ball is not touching, there's contact made. Jonathan Richardson, I tell you what, right at his feet, and for a big man, 300 pounds, he hit the deck in a hurry. I think I, I think he hit his ankle strong enough to bring on a little bit of a fall, but uh, I think Williams kind of helped that one <laughs> on. But again, the big fella caused a little earthquake here and a huge, huge play for Florida A&M. Walt Williams, 300 pounder, a punter. <laughs> Georgia Southern has had three opportunities in the last quarter. We now have 313 remaining, and the Eagles just cannot cash in on the breaks. Chuck Duffy straight ahead, stacked up. That's Anthony Williams. He's definitely got the star in his helmet this game. He has been a defensive stalwart for this ball club. FAMU trying to keep that ball on the ground and keep the clock moving. Williams is across the line of scrimmage. He's, he's three yards in the backfield waiting for Duffy. So again, they read another key. They've been able to pick that straight ahead stuff up on uh, Duffy pretty well. It's when he tries to get outside the tackles, they've had trouble with him. And again, they haven't thrown to him but once today. Second down. Brown, complete inside the 10. Pretty pass. Anthony Bland on the receiving end, but give credit to the quarterback. Keith Brown makes his roll very calm and a tight spiral. Some of the nice people that make it all possible behind the scenes for us. And as a matter of fact, this is the toughest day in the world for television people. I mean, it has been raining literally all day. They're soaking wet. They're standing in water, holding electrical cables, folks. <laughs> it's been a tough day for them. We, we salute all these people. Thanks very much. Always fun to be around electrical equipment when there's uh, the threat of lightning in the area. No, I'm taking these headsets <laughs> off. I'm out of here. <laughs> Just under two and a half minutes remaining. Florida A&M leading 21 to 17. This has been a long, time-consuming march, but created in part by breaks. Wally Williams, big center for Florida A&M, the anchor of that offensive line, might be the player of the game. Behind him, the quarterback sneaks in for one touchdown. He also comes up with the punt right there where he gets pressure and falls. You know, give credit to Ken Riley. The man has been around the game long enough. He played 15 years in the pros in his seventh year at FAMU. He saw Brown struggling at a point. He had a ball club in the lead. He saw him struggling. He came in with his backup quarterback, Weldon, let him play a couple of series, let Brown regroup himself. Brown has come back, answered the challenge, and he's got his ball on top. On a rainy season opening Saturday, Florida A&M trying to put this thing out of reach on first and goal. 
Under two and a half minutes remaining. The fullback, Reddick, or check that, Mike Mitchell. Nice tackle, Paul Carroll, the middle linebacker, and Georgia Southern will call timeout. That'll have to be their strategy the rest of the way. So let's take a break. Georgia Southern needs a big defensive stand. Eagles still within reach, trailing 21 to 17. They've had a couple of breaks, but have not been able to catch in. It'll take a huge break right now to pull this one out with just over two minutes remaining. In the second one double. On top Georgia Southern 21 to 17, but some of the diehards here in Statesboro at Paulson Stadium sticking in there for the final 216. The AM quarterback. Keith Brown has passed for a pair of touchdowns. He also sneaks in from a one yard out here in the second half for the go ahead score. And now Brown looking for some cushion right here. Second down. The fullback, Mike Mitchell, stacked up inside the five. You know, Phil, I was watching to see what, what Duffy was going to do with Mitchell running the ball to see how hard he would be blocking in the hole and he just wasn't blocking at all. And that's one of the reasons that Georgia Southern was able to stack that one up for not much of a gain at all. But Duffy just kind of just going through the motions right now. And that's a problem sometimes you find with a ball club. They've got a lead, you've got two minutes, you've got the other team on the ropes, and you gotta play to the final whistle blows. Ken Riley played that way. That's what he's gotta get across to his uh, Florida a and ball club. Now they of course have uh, uh, some other big ball games coming up. I made mention they got South Carolina State coming up next week. That'll be at home in Tallahassee. Then they go to play the number one Hurricanes down in the Orange Bowl in Miami. Game, by the way, to be seen on Sunshine, who's watching our game today. Uh, on the other side, Valdosta State comes in here for Georgia Southern. You know that uh, Coach Stowers and his ball club are really going to put in a very intense week of work because they just made some mistakes that they just shouldn't have made, and they let too many of the underneath passes go. So that young secondary grew up for a moment, but they lapsed back a little bit. And the linebackers also are learning new dimensions as well. Uh, anybody that watches the game field, we're going to come in and are going to throw on Georgia Southern. Sam, let's look ahead to tonight here on Sports South. Marshall Thundering Herd, preseason ranked number two in the nation, taking on rival Moorhead State. That's at 7 o'clock Eastern here on Sports South. It's also part of a big triple header here on Sports South. The Washington Huskies will then follow Moorhead and Marshall this evening. And they'll play Arizona State. And I tell you what, they can't take Arizona State too lightly. That could be a very good ball game on many of our prime network stations. Third down from the power eye. Brown the quarterback, Duffy in the eye. Brown rolls, has fan, touchdown. Oh. Pretty pass. What a nice catch. Mosley makes this catch, a former quarterback, if you will, makes a catch with people all over him. Watch the time that Brown has. Yes, this big front line of Florida A&M has shown that they are in good condition. And look at that catch by Mosley as he just wraps it in in front of the defender Stockton. And also coming up, Bradham, who's had such a good defensive day for Southern. But a big touchdown and a one that wraps it up here more than likely with a 10-point lead now for A&M. Third touchdown pass of the afternoon. Here's Tim Canman for the extra point. It's good. With just about two minutes remaining in the game, Florida A&M gets the score that it needs. And a big cushion. 28-17, FAMU on top. Keith Brown, he's going to have a hard time following this performance up, uh, living up to this performance, Sam. Put a lot on his plate, but he's eating it all, isn't he? 24 passes he has completed today out of 39 attempts. He has given the Georgia Southern secondary fits, and he has been a delight for his head coach, Ken Riley. 300 yards passing, three touchdowns, only the one interception. You know, I, I would be curious to talk to Ken after the ball game, which we will do. He said, if I had Tony Ezel with this ball club, he, he said, I might have the best ball club ever, but he's got Brown and they're doing well. Look at how hard these, these kids have worked and to come up short as they are today, 27 to 17. This is the home of a four-time national championship team, Georgia Southern. Don't shed any tears for these kids. I tell you what, it's a long 10 more games and they will be back and will be heard from here in Statesboro. Well, two minutes remaining. Should we count them out yet? There's still two minutes remaining. Let's see. Some of the fans here, the 12,000 this afternoon in Statesboro, 
heading on out to the parking lot. That's put it unlikely with two minutes to go. There you go. And a perfect kick. Perfect kick. Put the ball on the ground. Make Wright do something with it. Chris Wright at the 10. Gives it up. Bostic. That's Bostic. They'll oh. do it again, and he goes down. The ball is loose. They were going to try the play that the Stanford band made famous. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at that Florida A&M Rattler scoring drive. 11 plays, 68 yards. They chew up over three minutes. And Mosley on the receiving end, four-yard pass from Keith Brown, the junior. You know, we have seen a big game here for Florida A&M. They have established themselves at a ball club that has got a very tough schedule coming with their home opener next week and then playing Miami, but they've also established they have a lot of offensive weapons. They must shore up their defense a little bit more. They've only given up 17 points, but if they shore up their defense, this could be a ball club to contend with all year long down in Tallahassee. Joe Dupree still in there. And there is a timeout on the field by, I believe, Florida A&M as Georgia Southern splits three receivers up to the top, three wideouts. Only two men there in cover. Ken Riley, glad that his team reacted as quickly as it did and wisely calls the timeout. Well, Brown has to definitely be my star of the game. He has played a great game. Mickens, of course, catching the ball all over the field. Other side of the coin, uh, it's hard to pick out an offensive player for Georgia Southern, and the fact that they did sputter and sput along. Uh, defensively, I thought, as I mentioned, Anthony Williams uh, got the horn blowing today for uh, Georgia Southern. And he was their big man. I really think number 75, Anthony Williams, and Branham, uh, Marco Branham in the secondary. If there were two stars that stood out and will get some stars on their helmet, they definitely will at Georgia Southern. Very quiet Georgia Southern sideline. But we have Jim Noble standing down at the sideline. Let's go down for a final thought. Jim? Thanks, Phil. Well, kind of a closing thought here. Georgia Southern really came into this season feeling that they couldn't afford more than maybe one or two losses against Division I AA teams if they wanted to make the playoffs. They play four Division II teams on the schedule. That makes for a very weak schedule in the eyes of the playoff committee. Tim Stowers definitely wanted to start this season out with a win. Good point. Looking ahead to the schedule for Georgia Southern, they play eight home games. Final year of playing independent football. Next year, the Georgia Southern Eagles enter the Southern Conference. Still going to take a look at some more college football scores. At Death Valley, the Tigers pulling away from Ball State. Southern Miss leading Memphis State in the second quarter by 10. And the clock now at 147 here in Statesboro. Joe Dupree. Let's fly, and he takes a hit. Irwin Collier again, the defensive end in there giving pressure. Again, Dupree flushed out of the pocket, throws on the runs, but boom, you can see how well he gets hit there. And again, Collier, who leveled him the transfer from Alabama, and Dupree, well, he'll be seeing 93 in his nightmares tonight because that was a big, big hit. Uh, it's, just, it's just great secondary play here. Ken Riley has his ball club back in the prevent. Uh, they're going to get uh, maybe a pass here, but I very, very much doubt it as they're just spread out all over the field. On third and long, keep an eye on that safety, William Carroll. Dupree has his man, Sorrell. There's a first down. That may be Sorrell's first catch of the day, isn't it? Minute 30 remaining. I believe it is. Yeah, that's a big weapon they never could get the ball to. Sorrell is the Eagles' deep threat. Calling the play at the line of scrimmage. Off the hands of Shafton Fraley and out of bounds. Well, that bus ride back to Tallahassee is going to be a little bit uh, better as you take a good look at Brown, and he has had himself quite a day. Can you imagine toiling in the shadow of uh, Tony Ezell those years, and finally as a junior, a red shirt, you get to make your first start, and you do it this way on the road to Georgia Southern? Wow. Do it at a place where they've won mm. four national championships. They've only lost three games until this day. Great day. This is the day he will remember. Keith Brown, the junior quarterback of Florida A&M. Clock now at 119 remaining in the contest. Georgia Southern trailing 28 to 17. Dupree, let's fly. He was off balance and then he took a hit as he released the ball. Ian Connor that time took a shot. You know, they've got very, very active linebackers. We made mention of Salt Williams. They've got Connor, Stockton, and Daniels. 
And I tell you another thing about the linebackers for FAMU, they will put a stick on you. I mean, these guys are not only uh, good, quick people, they're big. We're talking 230, 225, uh, you know, all of them in the 200 range and solid, and they will put a good stick on you. This is a very good football team if they eliminate some of their defensive mistakes. Dupree on the draw to the 40. Had first down yardage, but he's knocked back near the 30. Ken Riley said if he has a good quarterback, <laughs> there they're having some fun. That's a way to finish up the day. <laughs> hey, my man, how you doing? <laughs> Ken Riley says if they have a good quarterback, this is his best team. Yeah. Well, Sam, let's go ahead and say he has a pretty fair quarterback, and this has to be his best club because they have really performed this afternoon. I tell you what, now a lot of people are going to say, hey, they have a nice slide here. Is he safe? You know, like they'll look at the secondary of Georgia Southern and say, well, he threw against the secondary just learning. But I tell you what, the kid had a lot of poise today, did Brown. On fourth down. Dupree just puts it up, and that's it for the Georgia Southern Eagles. Well, with about 57 seconds remaining in this game, our thanks to Florida A&M Athletic Director Dr. Walter Reed and Sports Information Director Alvin Hollins. They'll have a lot to say about Keith Brown and his performance today. His yeah. numbers are splendid. Big ones. Also, also, our thanks to Georgia Southern Athletic Director Dr. Bucky Wagner and Sports Information Director Matt Rogers. All those guys do a great job for us. You know what? A lot of good numbers. Staff folks up in the booth. Hospitality here in Statesboro, impeccable. Well, the weather could be better. I have to admit <laughs> that. <but. laughs> and our thanks to the two coaches. Spent a lot of time with us. Good people. Hope you've enjoyed it today. We have. Phil, I enjoyed working with you, buddy. You bet, Sam. It's been a pleasure this weekend. Florida a and is just going to put a knee down. That's Keith Brown. And watch that clock tick away. I'm curious to see how the Rattlers will stack up against Miami. Maybe the Canes take them lightly. They're down there in the Orange Bowl. This team has some size and some speed. One thing that uh, Miami will have working in their favor, certainly if they get by Iowa tonight, is they have a week off if they do get any bumps and bruises, and they'll be well prepared having to see this team live against uh, South Carolina State next week in Tallahassee. And Miami's loaded, trust me. Play clock at five seconds remaining. I'm looking forward to the game, our next game with Georgia Southern against the Furman Paladins, big rivalry game. That's in three weeks from this Saturday here on Sports South. And that's the ball game. Florida A&M comes into Statesboro, their first visit here at Paulson Stadium, and knock off the Georgia Southern Eagles. Final score is 28 to 17. For my partner, Sam Smith, this is Phil Van Horn saying, so long, the final score, 28 to 17. Wednesday night at 7.30, right after the Rolling Rock.